you were in time? Huh? Are you sure you were in time? Yep, it says 6.59, and when I sat down, it says 7. Okay. Well, it says 6 for me, so... You must be in this, like, weird time hole called the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a hole, all right. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but we're live, so welcome to the Vomitorium. I'm your host, The Metal, and joining me, as we usually hope, my co-host, Chris. How you doing today? I... I'm doing well. I was playing, I was yep. streaming uh, Far Cry 4 earlier. I saw. And, uh, that's it. Were I ate a bunch of food. It? Oh, yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, I was getting a bit bored towards the end just because, like, I don't know. I just wanted to play something else at the time. Yeah. But there wasn't much time before this, so I just kind of, like, tanked it out. I've never played 4. The uh, last one I played was 3, which I enjoyed. I, th I think the Far Cry three. series is pretty good. Yeah, 3 is pretty good. Uh, I like 3 a lot. That's why I wanted, wanted 4, because I knew 4 is very similar. And it is. But there's, like, different... There's a lot of differences, of course. Yeah. I mean, I do have my complaints of 3, but... Overall, I think it's a really solid game. Yeah, I like the way it did it. I like Far Cry 2 a lot. I, I feel like it's a pretty underrated game. I actually like 2 better. So, yeah. I, I was I, playing I it not that long. Well, game. It's probably been about 2 years now. But I was actually streaming that game too. But I never beat it on stream. Never finished, or at all, to be honest. And I just, you know, don't feel like... I don't feel like playing through it again. Not right now, at least. Yeah. Well, I heard, because uh, there's some a lot of complaints about 5. But 6 is supposed to be more like 3 again. Yeah, 6 looks pretty cool. The, well, I mean, they haven't shown the gameplay, but the setting looks really cool. Yeah, and just what, what we've heard about it. Like, it, it seems like it's going back to Far Cry. What you expect from the game. Yeah, Far Cry 5 is weird. Like, uh, I, I haven't played it, but I watched a lot of gameplay of it, and, uh, I mean, it looks fun, but it, it's way different. Yeah, that, that's why I wasn't interested in it, just because of how different it looked. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't know, it could be a fun game, but this isn't really what I want from Far Cry. It looks more like a Red Dead Redemption type yeah. game, but first person. Which it probably could have been a great game. If they just gave it its own title and made it on the side. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the problem when you make something as part of a franchise or a series, is it has to subvert expectations enough to demand that people buy it, but follow expectations enough that people still think it's part of the same franchise and series. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't feel like a Far Cry game. Yeah. Like, I guess the story kind of does... Because it's always, like, a crazy, like, leader or whatever. And that's, like, the bad guy or whatever. But, you know. Yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. It's very weird. Um, I don't know. I haven't played it, though. Yeah, but... well, it's like I can't say much about 4. I, I, I've watched through a lot of it. Uh, I just never played it myself. Three, though, I had a lot more experience with. Yeah, three and four are, like, really close. Um, like I said, there's there's some differences. Like, setting, mm -hmm. of course. I like the setting in four. It's, you know, it's like the Himalayas. It's like a fake Tibet. Well, it's but, the closest uh, you're probably going to get to real Tibet with how things have been going on for the last... Uh, half decade now yeah speaking of <laughs> it's a good uh, segue into the uh, Call of Duty news since this is all yeah. China related and <laughs> China being assholes um, the trailer which I praised you remember the last podcast I praised that trailer pretty hard at the end of it mm -hmm. uh, got removed and censored for putting up the uh, new one. 
Not by Treyarch or Ravensoft. As far as I know, both of them were really happy with the trailer. They were, you know, it was their studios that put it out. But it was uh, Activision, who initially had a separate trailer cut for China in the first place, uh, with one variant having a black screen over this one, like, cut, like second long bit, or a, a different scene cut in. But there was originally that famous video from uh, Tiananmen Square with the guy standing in front of the tanks holding up the side. And they cut it out. They deleted the whole trailer, made it like half as long so it doesn't even contain like protest scenes at all. And then re-uploaded it just because of Chinese money. Because clearly Activision was the one who did that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're the ones that do it with Blizzard as well. Yeah. Which oh is God, something just... I was saying from like the um, like the second Blizzard and Activision merged where we knew that it was going to happen. I said that uh, they were going to be sinking Blizzard down. I was like, no, 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 no. Activision doesn't have a lot of control. Blizzard's still their own entity. But you've been seeing the creep over the years. Like, I blame Activision directly for the decay of Blizzard as a company. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah. It all started first, which I don't think this was a bad decision, but you knew this was how they creeped, it away, it creeped their way in when they added the premium shop to World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, it grew from there where they started segmenting parts of games... I mean, look, look at the difference between StarCraft 1 and 2, right? Oh yeah, for sure. And then uh, Overwatch is a perfect example of decisions made just to please the Chinese and other things like that. Ugh. Yeah, that, shit's ridiculous, man. I... And it's always been Activision, right? Like, Activision... Oh yeah has made some good games like they've, they've put out some really good games but if you look at their whole history they've just been like tanking things since day one yeah, ever, ever since Activision bought Blizzard it's gone downhill yeah. or anything in the past like 20 years and they used to like not not necessarily intentionally it's not like they were trying to put them out of business but they basically used to buy companies for like a specific property and then sink the company that they bought like look at uh guitar hero as a franchise yeah and th also dude i refused to buy like licensed games movie games and all those type of tie-in stuff for years oh, yeah. because of activision because they had the license to, like every single tie-in game and they all sucked I just did buy them because they usually did suck. <laughs> yeah, but they like they all sucked because they were owned by Activision, licensed. It was a license that was licensed out to a smaller company, but still they had to meet the requirements for whatever Activision told them to do. So it was still all Activision's fault in the first place. Speaking of gaming companies and buying licenses, I think I might know what I, I'm going to play after this podcast. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. What you gonna, yeah. What you What you going to play? Uh, Game Dev Tycoon. Oh, okay. That's a pretty good one. I never played that game, but, uh... I was thinking about it. And I saw it was only 10 bucks, I was like, oh. Yeah. But at least there's some good news about Call of Duty, right? Because we were, we were talking about this a little bit uh, prior to starting. Is that we know for a fact that it's supposed to be a direct sequel to the story of Black Ops 1. And while I did talk yeah, about that, it a sick. little bit on the last podcast... I did enjoy the story despite being burnt on the game due to circumstances that have nothing to do with the game's fault whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh... I really like the story. Like, a lot. Plus, like, if you want to get sold on the story, the opening mission does it for you. Like, especially, like, that shot at the end of it. Mm-hmm. That I... I Kind of, I mean, it's old enough that I don't really care about spoiling things, but at the same time, I feel like if you don't spoil it, it's easier to get people to go and play it for themselves. 
Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I think... I don't think it's... Uh, I don't think it's something that uh, would really be a spoiler at this point. Yeah. That was 12 years ago. I mean, who doesn't want to shoot a Cuban leader right in the face? <laughs> Was it, it was a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if that wasn't enough to get you to want to play the rest of the game, I don't know what is. Man. Yeah, the game has a lot of that stuff, too. Like, a lot of... The whole thing with Reznov and all that, it, it, was, yeah. it was just insane. It was really good. I loved it. That's my favorite, probably my favorite campaign in Call of Duty by far. Yeah, I, I would probably say the same. I mean, if I were to say what my favorite Call of Duty, it's probably still World at War. But as far as a campaign goes, oh, I did like World at War. Yeah. And I like the fact that this World is going to be a direct popular. sequel to that, uh, to Black Ops One. What were you saying, Bo? Oh. Oh, I was saying I wish World of War was more popular. I do too. I, like, I, I really like the remake to Modern Warfare. I think it's really good. I would have rather had a remake to World of War. Especially because, like, the original version of Modern Warfare still kind of holds up really well. It doesn't feel bad to go back and play. But World at War hasn't aged as gracefully, despite, you know, being my favorite Call of Duty. And it would have been really cool to have, like, an upgraded version of that. And there's a chance they could still make it. It could. Especially with the popularity of that remake. We just have to be vocal about it. I still it. want it. Yeah. The, I don't have the Modern Warfare remake. Oh, I don't either. I, or remaster. I tried it a little bit, but I haven't gotten to play all the way through. I watched a friend playing it though, and oh, are you talking about the one that Modern Warfare just came out? Yeah, the one that just or the came remaster. Out. The, the 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 one that came out recently. Oh, I I wouldn't consider that the re remake. It's, that's more like a sequel to Modern Warfare One. Yeah. Or a prequel. A prequel. It's a prequel to Modern Warfare One. It, it's it's kind of both a prequel and a remake. I wouldn't I wouldn't consider it, because there is the remaster. There's the. COD 4 remaster. Yeah, there is that. But Modern Warfare is its own game. Like, 100%. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a prequel. It takes place before the events of Modern Warfare 1. Yeah. But, uh... It's solid. Like, even watching people play through it, that was the game that made me want to start playing Call of Duty again. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty fun. I like, and I do like the campaign a lot now. And the graphics for like the cutscenes are incredible. I mean, I'm not really a gra like graphics don't make a game for me, but the the like cinematics are insane. Yeah. Well, and it's also like it's a very precise game, mechanically. So, the one game type that I think arguments matter is when precision is important, right? And there's mm -hmm. all, like, these little, like... I, I guess you would kind of consider them mini-games in any game that's a lot more jovial, but there's a lot of, like, side events in that game, right? Like, we have to do things like um, control a camera to direct somebody around, or uh, you're controlling, like, these drones and stuff like that where having good graphics really aids in the precision of that type of stuff. Yeah, true. Yeah. And that's the only time that I think it matters. Like, let's talk about Final Fantasy. It does not matter a damn thing if the graphics look good in Final Fantasy. True. Yeah. Like, the imagery has to look good, but it doesn't need, like, these hyper-realistic, high-scaled graphics for the game to operate. It's not really doing much for it. 
other than visual uh, wow, which isn't bad. It's, it's not bad to astound people visually. But yeah, no, in, I mean, I love the way the Final Fantasy VII remake looks. Yeah. It looks really good. But, like, in a game, especially, like, really high-precision first-person shooters, graphics actually do start to matter. Because the better the graphics get, the more precise hitboxes can get because they can actually attach things to the models itself on how, like, the, uh, the polygons and meshing are set up. And it's something that does start to really matter in those games. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's something that's working if, out If, you know... Huh? I said it's something that's working out in their favor. Yeah, I, do, I mean, like I said, I do like the new Modern Warfare. It's just... I don't know. I just can't play certain games for too long. No. Or I really anything for too long nowadays. Like, even RuneScape, I'm, I can't even... I haven't played that in a bit. I don't know. I say that, but even though I've streamed Far Cry 4 for 11 hours the other day. <laughs> But, <laughs> but like I said, now like today, I don't. I feel like taking a break from it. Yeah, so. I find myself more easily able to play something for long periods of time if I'm streaming it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's why I've been streaming these games because I have a higher chance of actually beating the game if I'm streaming it than if I don't. Yeah, because there's like a lot that. of times before I'll just I'll just drop a game because whatever but now since i'm like streaming i want to finish it for the audience exactly yeah no i was like that uh when borderlands the pre-sequel dropped i think mm -hmm. the day it came out i played it for 14 hours straight on stream Jeez. and i think i only even went up to use the restroom like twice the entire time <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I ate the whole time I streamed either. Like, I did before I started and after I ended, but I just went, like, 14 hours w without, like, any real breaks. Yeah, when I ate, when I mean, when I streamed the other day with the uh, Far Cry 4, it was... I don't think I ate at all the entire time. Today, dude, today I ate on stream and watched videos. <laughs> That's why you uh, react you, to Andy, but uh, you know I had to eat, so you need to get to the point that you're making money off of it, so you can attract a for uh, sure a, a streamer girlfriend. Where what she does is she makes food for you while you're streaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to a girl, but yeah. it's weird right now. Um, Isn't it always weird talking to a girl? True. <sighs> uh, yeah, I've been wanting to stream more. It's just. I, uh, people every day they're just like like going to family they like want me to like hang out and stuff and it's like like I have to treat this like a job yeah yeah and if I want to take it seriously and so I'm just like no like I can't <laughs> and I feel bad but like at the same time I told them like I have to stream I have to do this shit yeah 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 I, I know how it is like, as soon as I'm done with this manga that's been taking up a lot of my time, I'm on, like, the last two pages of this thing. <laughs> Which is great. I'm gonna get back into uh, streaming regularly again. And you, you do have to, like, partition and dedicate time to it if you want to grow things. Exactly, like we have this and that's the thing. Like, I took, like, two, almost three weeks off. From everything. <laughs> And it's like, I can't do that shit. I can't be doing that shit. Yeah. I mean... It's not good for growth at all. No, nah, not at all. And it was great. That, that fucking... That stream, the 11-hour stream was great. I got seven followers in one stream. Oh, nice. You know? I know it's not a lot for those big streamers out there, but for me, it's huge. Oh, yeah. That's uh, huge. I remember when I was streaming... Um, my best day I ever had was better than that, but more often than not, you'd be lucky if you even get a follower per stream. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I think my best day, I got like 23 followers in one stream. I think my best day was, it wasn't that much, it was like, 
in the teens probably because um, I was playing Diablo 1 and this guy who uh, I guess he's pretty known a lot among the Diablo community yeah. posted me. Well, what's and, sad about uh, my best day being 23 followers is that's like half my follower count. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing, like, that's what I was telling him. I was like, think about it. I was like, seven, if I got seven dollars, oh my god, seven followers a day for a week, that's 49 followers. Yeah. So, like, and it only gets bigger. Like, the more followers you get, the more you're gonna get. It's the snowball effect. Exactly. So, I don't know, I, I tell them, but they, like, still, like, today, like, at, 610. My uncle was like, hey, we're, we're, uh, are you streaming? We're gonna come over and bring some food. I was like, or he was gonna go pick up food and come over. I was like, I'm, I can't. I was like, I'm streaming and I'm gonna be doing a podcast in an hour. What are dollars? They're fucking followers who give you money. We, also known as subscribers. Um, Dude, I want yeah, some of like, those. <laughs> huh? So I want some of those. Some dollars, right? Yeah, I yeah. Have three. Dude, so last night, the uh, it was the, the time of the month that it hits. Not in that weird way. Um, the money uh, got taken out of my account for SoundCloud, which is how we host the, uh, the podcast. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that time of the month. Um, and so far, this thing has been basically being paid... Almost entirely by X Dynamus Chaos, the uh, the comics and books and stuff that I write. Nice. Which is fine, you know, but it would be great if it got popular enough that people started throwing money at us so I didn't have to uh, pay for everything that way. Especially because, yeah. like, the X Dynamus Chaos money would be A, uh, great to go towards life, and B, would be great to go towards expanding that project and not other things. <laughs> True. Wink, wink, Feel wink. That. Yeah, it would be good. But, you know. Just takes time. Yeah. Or, you know, if one of us blow up, then... <laughs> I don't want to blow up. That would be uncomfortable. Huh? Uh, I'll blow up, that's fine. Like, ah. Oh. You go from being my normal, I guess, mostly sugar based self, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen atoms, into just like carbon dioxide and water everywhere. We'll just leech off each other, whoever becomes popular first. Oh, oh, popular! I thought you were talking about combustion. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to blow up. <laughs> yeah, it's not the blow up I meant, but uh, popular. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't be popular. Sure, sure. We'll just leech off each other. <laughs> Easy. I just gotta find a, a big streamer to leech off of. What's we'll weird be good. is, I've always wanted to be infamous rather than famous well with this uh, that's very plausible yeah yeah that's very very possible but I don't know I've always had like this weird goal in life that I wanted to be in infamy I don't think that's a normal I thing don't to want to be infamous I mean I might be among certain groups of people, but for the most part, I think I'd be fine. I don't know. There's something attractive about infamy. Infamy. Yeah. Kind of to laugh at people. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I love laughing at people. Laughing at people is the greatest. I, I agree. Especially um, laughing at people for things that you do. The hypocritic laugh. That's the most enjoyable <laughs> laugh of all. Well, that's why a lot of people watch uh, 
stream because they laugh at things that they would do as well. Oh, so that's why cringe compilations are popular? <laughs> yeah, because probably a lot of people that are watching now would be very, uh, very good subjects for those videos. Yeah, like, I never understood how cringe compilations got popular. Especially because, like, I don't get most of them. Really? Yeah, because I'm always seeing things like... I think like, they're hilarious, what? the certain ones. Why would you ever think about doing that? Doing what? Just like Watching some, it or... No, no, some of the stuff that are in doing. the videos. I'm just like, why would you ever consider doing this act that you're in the middle of? Exactly, that's the funny part, is yeah. because you wouldn't. So, like, it's like, what, what, what in their mind would make them do this? You're yeah. just like... It's hilarious because it's not normal. It's not a normal, like, reaction. Well, I think that's in the opposite sense. It's why I like Jackass. But specifically Jackass 3 when they were all doing the same stupid shit but they were sober. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they even said in interviews that they both don't but do regret Jackass 3 because they were sober through it the whole time unlike the previous two. Yeah. But it's like, man, that all seems like shit I would probably do, and I would definitely be doing it sober if I did. I don't know if I would do some of that shit, man. I would do some, there's others I wouldn't. Yeah, they do some pretty crazy what? stuff. Yeah, they do some pretty fucking dangerous stuff. I think one of my favorite things that they ever did in Jackass was when they had to uh, go through the alligator pit. And they're wearing, like, nothing but a Speedo. <laughs> yeah. F <laughs> Man, I miss that show. I do, too. Jackass was so great. Uh, brown, 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 brown. I feel like... <sighs> I, I feel like the cool? movies are what ultimately killed Jackass, because they were after the show, but I feel like if they just held up long enough and, caught, like, called the bluff... The demand for them would have been great enough just to bring the show back. But then you make so much more money with movies than you do with TV shows. True. I don't. I mean, the movies are good. They're all they good. They were, yeah. So, but yeah, shows last longer. And they give you more content. Just in general. Shows. Shows give you like a. Like a stream of revenue, while movies, well, I guess movies, movies still kind of do. Revenue, yeah, yeah, but it's like an initial burst. Yeah, and over time, it's well. A the initial bit. burst is what's important because you have to make back the money you spent on the movie. Yeah, exactly. While a, a lot of long. shows, part of it is kind of going into debt because you know you're going to be relying on serialization. Yeah. I think movies are just smarter, to be honest. Especially in a day where, like, streaming services are a thing, and you can just make a full-length movie and put it up onto a streaming service immediately. In the same case, you could do the show as well, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but it's a lot more investment to do a show. Yeah. Which is why I'm hoping the Halo one is good. I, I know am we brought hoping it that up too. Before multiple times but I'm you know I'm gonna reiterate it as much as I can please don't be bad well I saw the uh, the teaser stuff for the Dragon Dogma show which we talked about previously by the same studio that did yeah. Castlevania and I'm hoping it's good I can't I can't, honestly can't tell from what little teaser stuff that was shown mm-hmm uh, speaking of Castlevania I heard that they were getting rid of uh, that guy you don't like that's working on it. Oh, good. Yeah, I do. I hate that guy. Oh, uh, what's his name? It's uh, Warren Ellis. Yeah, they said they were getting rid of him. Good. I know a lot of people, too, in my same circles that actually like Warren Ellis. I've never liked his writing. Like, ever. <laughs> oh. Hello, Reese. 
So I'm glad that what he's uh, getting off of uh, Castlevania. Why? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it says Netflix Castlevania may drop or else after season four. So I guess it would be after next season. Well, it's probably because they already have that part, which I really, I really don't like calling them seasons or parts, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Warren Ellis gets a lot of earned hate in uh, Matthew Reese's circles, which I'm also kind of in that circle, so there's an overlap there. Yeah, it's earned. <laughs> uh, probably for the same reasons I, I dislike him. But yeah, uh, they probably already have that part like finished as far as writing and stuff goes. It might just be in like, the end of development cycle. Mm-hmm. And that's why if they did cut him, it would have to be after that part. But yeah, I've well, hopefully, uh, hopefully it makes it better. I don't really know anything about him, so I can't say anything. But I mean, I've enjoyed it so far. But uh, yeah, I mean. You know, I have these sodas, but you know, you know what I don't have? I don't, I don't have a brisk, and you do, and I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, I have an entire <laughs> case of brisk. Look, even for when this one runs out, I have a, another one sitting right here waiting. <laughs> I have Coke and A&W, which I like, but, I mean, I really like brisk. Like, a lot. I'd rather have an ST, but, you know, that's not really an option anymore. True. True. Come on, Nestle. Bring Nest T back in canned form. I want it. I will pimp you out every single show if you do. Nest T was the best. Bring it back. Bring back the snowman. Yeah, I don't want to be a skeleton. I want to be a snowman. Bring it back. I want to be a snowman. Come on. If I'm stuck being a skeleton, I'm going to scare my co-host here. Mm-hmm. I don't need... I, I can't, I can't, can't say, the, say word the word again. I said it once. Yeah. I said it once today. That's it. If I say it again, it'll... It'll he'll throw up. Yeah, I don't want to throw up. It's bad. Those, those big, bad skelly men. <laughs> No. No! I don't want to think about it. And then I watched a video with... Uh, they were in a, in a video earlier. I can't, dude. I can't take it anymore. No more. Oh. Let's not talk about those anymore. Oh, but I love talking about them. <laughs> I would rather talk about something else than those things. Would you rather talk about ants? I would, <laughs> but I, the, I mean, you know how much I don't want to talk about that, so yeah. that, if that gives you a scale. Uh, I have a scale from skeleton to ants. There's not really much to fill in, in there. <laughs> I mean, I like ants, so I just don't like talking about them on the podcast. Yeah. You like fire ants? I fucking hate fire <laughs> ants. Part of the reason I wanted to come up here. Not really. It's not like a huge reason, but... No! <laughs> Clicked on the link. Um... Yeah, oh, okay. I, I saw what the link is. You don't have to click on the link it. if you have the Discord up, because there's a preview of it. In the yeah, but I, I was... I didn't have Discord up at the time. Yeah, I, I don't want to see the pre preview of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, actually, this, this reminds me, because I mentioned this too, and it made him sad. Uh, one of the regular uh, to our chat, right, is uh, Evan, right? Yeah. And he's been doing this weird thing where while I'm on Rick Piper's stream, which is, I'm probably going to be on it immediately after this podcast is over, just because he streams uh, every weeknight. Yeah. Anyway, so while I'm on a stream, he has been typing in the Vomitorium Discord instead of the chat to get me to relay the um, message to the stream. Weirdly enough. 
<laughs> he did. The, he was doing like the same shit. With like he was Your messaging shit. in my stream to tell, message you. I was like, why? Oh yeah, I told him you narked on him too. <laughs> what did he say? He's like Billy narked on me, and he had like a sad face. <laughs> No, actually, I'm going to read it, because uh, I, I loved the image that you sent me, just, like, exactly how he worded it. So that that's going into <laughs> the podcast. Uh, let me open it up. Um, it's, it's so good. Yeah. I also have the other part of the screenshot, too, because it was just a good... It was just... <laughs> it made me laugh. So. Okay, so Evan says, Mr. Baldwin, I hope this letter finds you well. I contact you on behalf of Mr. Hotep. He wishes you to relay a message to Mr. The Metal. Please tell him he sucks. Signed, Evan Hotep, the greatest. And then he gave you a namaste afterwards. And that made yeah. me laugh when you shared it with me. <laughs> namaste. Namaste. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He sure did. He was saying other shit too on another day, but I didn't screenshot that. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could look through his um, chat logs, actually. <laughs> Are you going to dox him now? Yeah, I'm going to dox him. Ooh. Yeah, so, anyway, he stopped doing that uh, in the Vomitorium because the Vomitorium Discord is public. Anybody can join it. If you would like to come into the uh, show, we do accept callers. You can just move mm -hmm. into the waiting room, and we'll move you in. True. That's how it works. Uh, or uh, Buck, uh, one of our mods, will move you in. Uh, but, because it's public, a, there's a certain someone who just entered the room that made Evan leave because he feels obligated to not be anywhere that that person is. But we don't kick people out until they do something wrong. Right, and because he left of that, the, I had to open up. Yeah, yeah, it went into the uh, the vomitorium. There's a a person who just joined the other day, and I don't kick people out of places until they do something wrong. I told he had mod powers; he could have kicked him out, and I honestly would not have questioned it. But he also felt like it wouldn't be appropriate until he did something wrong in the Discord itself. Right. So he left, and I set up a private chat so he and our friend Mallet could still kind of do their little fun game thing where they message me to relay messages to the stream, right? <laughs> um, and then he was like, oh, we need to get Billy in here for when we do the podcast. And I'm like, man, I'm going to tell you right now, Noctinix does not look at anything except maybe whatever service that you have up on the side, like the Twitch chat or whatever. You don't have Discord or the Restream chat room or anything like that open when we're uh, podcasting. Most of the time, yeah. Yeah. Like, you have Discord open because we're using it, but you don't have, like, the window up. Yeah, sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't. Yeah. Like, right now I do, but when I, like, click anything, it just goes under, you know? Yeah. So... Well, a lot of times you just have like you're you're playing freaking RuneScape while we're doing the podcast. <laughs> Sometimes I was last time, but I'm not doing anything right now. Yeah, I'm playing with I'm right now. I'm playing with cat nail clippers. Cat nail clippers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you clip your own cat's nails? Of course. I don't think I've I ever clipped a cat's good. nails. It's easy. You just don't clip their uh, cuticle. Oh, well, yeah, duh, but... No, I think, like, because we've always had stuff for the cats to keep their nails low on their own. Mm-hmm. So I've never had to clip a cat's nails. Oh, uh, I mean, we have scratching both shit, but it just makes them sharper. Um. Well, okay, so the one that we would have had the problem would have been Rocket, right? Be uh, but he was an outside cat for most of his life, so he would just file them down on tree bark. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, see, uh, my cats don't go outside. Yeah. None of them do now, um, so I don't know how Matt deals with it, but... 
I wish I could, uh... Dang, I don't want fucking Discord Nitro. Discord <laughs> Nitro? Why would you want that? I'm not paying those fucking soy boys <laughs> for Discord. Get out of here. Bunch of fucking Doras. Um, Dora I want to Explorer. use my emotes from from my server. But oh, yeah, you have to have Nitro to be able to use uh, emotes from other servers. Are you telling me this Dark and Link guy has Nitro? Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, okay, no, this dude... Oh, I'm gonna tell you about this dude, right? <laughs> this dude uh, will, like... If he really likes the server, he will, he will, like, just boost the server to get rolls and stuff. Oh. But I'm gonna tell you now... Boosting this server will get you no rolls, so don't 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 even bother. We don't need the boost. If you want to, we're not. I'm not going to complain, but you're, you're not going to get any benefits from doing it other than the server now has bonus options. What does boosting even do? Uh, does it just like make it like higher up on like the list to join? No, no. There's um certain options you can <laughs> like um animated emotes and stuff like that. You can put like a, a header image in the corner and everything. It's basically like having a professional server, I guess. I don't really feel that's necessary. <laughs> Which is why I'm not going to boost it myself. It's like paying a, a subscription to have more stuff in your server. That's weird. Especially when we literally only use this server for connecting people together for the sake of the show. <laughs> True. Yeah. From the Discord? Yeah. Well, we're using Discord. Yeah, I, uh, Buck answered it te earlier, so I didn't bother, but to answer the question, so you guys are streaming from the Discord? We are using Discord to capture the, uh, to have video, but I'm using yeah. OBS to stream it to restream, which is sending it everywhere. True. That's how we do. He's, re he's right, you know. I'd have to be right. I'm the one doing it. Unless I was True. lying to you. I, I could always be lying to you. You can't take me at my word. You gotta be skeptical. I mean, do I, do I look like I have an honest face to you? Uh... Cause I wouldn't answer yes to that. Sometimes. I mean, you did kick me in the nuts first time we met, so I'd yeah, say it's pretty. Yeah, that did happen. <laughs> it barely looked like you have a face. That is probably true. He doesn't have a face, it's just, it's whatever, it's that, there's actually nothing there, and it's your own mind putting a face on it, so. Well, I'm actually flat. not here, we found out a long time ago yeah. that I am actually just a hallucination, a figment of everybody's collective insanity. Yeah, that's the one. That's what I meant to say. Yes, DL, <laughs> if you talk here... It does show up on the stream, even though you're in Discord, because the restream chat forwards everything to every spot without copying it more than once. Haha, <laughs> everyone saw you ask that question, and now they're going to be like, wow, he asked a question. Yeah. So, you know, yep. check it. Yep. Um, yep, check it. Like a, like a checkbook that I don't think anyone really uses anymore. Yeah, I don't think anybody... Uh, born after 2000 knows what a checkbook is. <laughs> Let me write you a check. A what? A what? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at all these people. They're all here, too. 
the, the gang's all here. Well, I'm sure people know they, what a check is, That doesn't make though. sense. They probably just got uh, one recently if because the direct deposit thing for them Trump bucks did not work very well. I know I got a check sent to me. Trump bucks. I was Trump. very, very responsible with my Trump bucks and blew them all on a computer. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, I mean, it's business expense. I use it for literally everything I do. Wait a minute. There's... Hold on. There's four people in chat. Or there's four people talking in chat and re through Restream. Yeah. And, I, and I'm watching the stream, but there's only three viewers. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Actually, it says there's five Some viewers. Some fish is going on. Oh, it went up to four for me. Yeah, but uh, oh, dude, Reese was lucky. He got his direct deposit. I tried for I I had, a I week check. straight trying to get it direct deposited, and then by the time it finally let me into the system, they said, "Sorry, we already sent your check out." Yeah, that's what happened to me. That's what happened to me. I know. I had to wait like two weeks. And I'm not gonna blame them. People like kind of irrationally hate on the IRS. <laughs> Like, for no good reason to. It's like, you know there's like 200 people there that have to service the, I don't know, what's the adult population of the U.S.? Like a million people each? Yeah, there's about 200 million people would probably be the adult population if uh, a lot of our population is also uh, children, right? So it can't be the whole sure. 350 million. So, yeah, that's it's about a, about a million people each. That... <laughs> You know who hates the IRS? Uh, e people who commit tax fraud? E-thoughts. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that does kind of fall into the category of people who commit tax fraud. True. I don't think they're intentionally committing tax fraud, but that's because I don't think they know what tax fraud is. We have to pay, pay taxes for our nudes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure do. Ooh, welcome to business. <laughs> is that there's a lot of good reasons criminal to hate the IRS? Entity. It is a criminal entity. Um, that might be true. True. I don't know. I'd probably have to do a lot of uh, rhetorical writing to justify that. If it is, the crime doesn't start from them. They're just aiding and abetting. Which you could say probably about any bureaucratic uh, agency in our country. You know what the problem is? Is that, yeah. you know, where, where's Scruff McGruff? Yeah, dude, where's the crime dog? He could solve this problem for us. He'll sniff it out like, uh... and take a bite out of crime. I know I'm not wrong. Yeah. Um. No, I think he's talking about me. Where I said, uh, "Nah." You can say that about all bureaucratic agencies. Well, because our not entire true. system is built on, um, like, electoral control of the public to some degree, right? Sometimes you just elect people who elect people, but there's still a level of control there, right? You have representatives speaking in your favor. Uh, bureaucratic systems have absolutely nothing to do with election. They just get hired by people. Sometimes hired by people who weren't even elected. Um, and a lot of laws and legislation are even made by people who were never elected. Like the, um, uh, the assistance of congressmen and stuff like that. <laughs> Freaking Evan. Well, well, well. It isn't really the dark. <laughs> oh. I, you told me to relate a message, and therefore I did, so I'm not a narc. It, well, that message was relayed. The fact that you told me that uh, he said you should ask for more money. 
I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the thing that I told him that he said, oh man, he narked on me. <laughs> And it only came up because he, uh, it wasn't him, it was, uh, our friend Raggedy had mentioned that I should ask Rick for more money for being on his show all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, income tax is least... totally a violation of the Constitution, and so the fact that... conversation. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you could defend that, but... I don't know. Like, I honestly can't defend income tax. There's other taxes I could totally defend, like sales tax and stuff, but I, I don't... Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't I don't think that I can actually... I've tried to. Like, I've, I've seriously... I've tried to play the devil's advocate. I've sat there for a long time trying to figure out some defense for income tax, and I just can't. There's it's like inheritance tax, right? Because it's like... Yeah, it's kind of bullshit. Yeah, because you're <laughs> so taxing something that's already That money taxed. should not... Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're taxing already tax money. Yeah. Evan, I break a lot of hearts. That's what I do. So call me the heartbreaker. This is what I do. You know? I also wear leather jackets and slick back my hair, so... <laughs> do you even ever keep your hair long enough to slick back? Uh... I... Yeah, my hair... Meh. I guess I get to the side right now. Oh, okay. But more yeah, like the seat breaker. That actually did happen more than once. I mean, to be fair, both those seats were on the end of their lifespan. But both of my folding chairs that uh, Buck's family had gifted me back when we lived in Arlington, you broke when you were over at two different times. <laughs> I remember breaking no chairs. Yeah, you did. They were already broken. You were probably under the influence at the time. Oh, that, that probably. Yeah. yeah. I think my Facebook picture, I have my hair slicked back, kind of. Um. <laughs> so you go, okay, I have to bail after that take. Catch you guys later. Okay, see you later. Um. <laughs> what take? I don't know. Probably the fact that I've sat there and I've tried to defend income tax, I can't. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, you uh, you broke <laughs> two different chairs. But like I'm saying, I think they were both at the end of their lifespan anyway. They were they were already pretty old chairs. It's just funny that both of them broke while you were sitting in them. I had to have been drunk. Yeah. Were those the ones that had, like, cardboard under the fucking seat? Uh, Pretty yeah. Much? Yeah. Yeah, then, the, yeah, okay. <laughs> I remember that now. Like, those yeah, things, those things, are, things are made of, like, paper. New, but they don't, they don't have any longevity to them. Those things were, like, made of paper. I'm pretty sure one of them, the, the thing didn't even stay on it. Yeah. <laughs> Like, um, I think the chair I'm sitting in right now is sturdier. It, it feels like there's more, like there's actually plywood on the base. Man, it should be at least something like that. Yeah. You need, a, you need a full metal folding chair, even if it's, it's not that cushy. Folding because, chair? Why a folding chair? Well, because they're good for throwing. I have a full metal folding chair right here, actually. Yeah. Oh, wait, you, you can ask... Uh, um, no, it is. Uh, one of our regulars who uh, actually filled in a couple times when you were gone. Uh, Pattaya, that you need a full metal folding chair because they're good for throwing at people. True. I mean, you're not wrong. Matt. No, yeah, that's full metal. It has cushions. Yeah. Like, sometimes you just need Ugh. to get somebody in the chair. Gosh! Bash it over their heads. Bam! Suck it. Um. 
Oh, you know what I've been watching lately that I think you, I'm pretty sure you said you didn't like it that much. What was it? Um, uh, Korra. Oh yeah, I didn't like Korra. I, I've been, I've been enjoying, enjoying it a lot, actually. How like, far are you I enjoying? like it a lot. Uh, I'm almost at the end of season one. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I like it a lot so far. I mean... The, I, I thought the show actually started out fairly strong. It takes a nosedive, though. Yeah, I guess I'll have to see that. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I've been enjoying it a lot. Uh, I like the setting. It's like kind of like 1920s. A mix between, like, what seems like Hong Kong and, like, New York City. Yeah, uh, well, see, a lot of people kept thinking New York, but when I looked at it... You can see some of that, but I thought it was heavier Hong Kong vibes. Yeah, well, I, I, th I don't think it's a setting. mix. Because, like, you know, you have, like, the Statue of Aang, which looks like yeah. uh Statue of Liberty. and. But it also kind of looks like the statue of uh, Bruce Lee that's outside of Hong Kong. I did not know there was a statue of Bruce Lee outside of Hong Kong. <laughs> But it's also called, like, New Republic City. I, I think I definitely think it's a mix. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, oh, I, like I, like, I got I heavy like Hong Kong vibes off of that city. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially what people are wearing and shit. And, I mean, everything's in Chinese. So... But also, like, the way their police force is structured and stuff like that. With, like, the, uh, the metal benders and stuff. Like, they're police squadron looks a lot like the uh, precinct for the Hong Kong police. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely more lean to that because of the setting. But. Yeah. I think New York is something that uh, comes to people's mind because they are very similar cities. There's not a lot of uh, difference between the two cities in structure. It's more of a culture thing. Uh, but New York is more familiar to a lot of people, I guess. Yeah, Especially when they police beat the shit. Police, they're poli New York police are known for being the shit out of people in the. Yeah, there, there's not a lot of difference between them there. That's that's not really a. <laughs> in fact, if anything, the police in Hong Kong in the twenties, I think, was mostly British. Yeah. Um. So. I, I do believe Britain That's why was I occupying Hong Kong at the time. And honestly, I, I think they wish the British were still occupying Hong Kong right now. <laughs> it would probably help. Well, I, I don't know about Hong Kong, but... Well, I get, yeah, actually, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then they could fight against the Chinese. <laughs> Well, I think the Chinese would be too scared to even attack Hong Kong if the British were still there. They would kind of just leave them alone and just deal with the rest of the continent. Yeah. Though, who knows, you I mean, know. that's what... Hmm? Well, I'm just thinking, like, if things continued on the path they were going, right, the World Wars probably would have been a lot different on that front. Oh yeah, for sure, because they would have uh, already had some help <laughs> right out the gate, rather than... Uh, oh, because the British always had later. Navy ships there, so they, they could have yeah. created a blockade that even stopped the uh, the storm front. Japanese, yeah. yep. True. True. But, uh... Were British there in the twenties? I don't know. I don't remember. I think when they, they were there after. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. I know they were there after World War Two. Yeah. And they were definitely in India. I don't know, I haven't looked into the timeline uh, for that in a while. No, I neither have I. So if you play Jenga. Are you right? I've played Jenga in a hot minute. 
You ever want to play? Also, uh, I'll play Jenga. Life size uh, Jenga. Huh? You want to play life size Jenga? What? No. Why not? <laughs> I already played that 19 years ago. Um. <laughs> Almost 19 years ago. Almost. Give or take two weeks. Well, take two weeks or give. Yeah, it, it's coming. <laughs> it's, it's definitely coming. I'm gonna and throw it don't a party. stop coming. It don't stop coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to 9/11. I mean, I, <laughs> well, there goes the joke. I was meant, <laughs> I was gonna go to Subway to get the special. <laughs> You know, the 9-11 special. Oh, yeah? The two sandwiches for $9. Pretty good deal. Two sandwiches for $9? Shit. Right now, it's, it's Subway. Two sandwiches for $5. We don't ever I think, think about eating at too. Subway. But that makes me consider it. Me neither. Same. <laughs> 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 I, I don't hate it, but... I would never choose to really go there, but with that being a maybe. Maybe. Oh, man. I think, Any sandwich, uh, too? Probably having some... Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm the red on uh, OBS. Uh-oh. Yeah. That's what happens to me sometimes when I stream. Don't know what the issue it is. It sucks. I get so pissed. Like, because my computer's cool, so I don't think that's the problem. Nah, it's, pro it's just bandwidth. Yeah, that's gotta be it. That's what happened to me. Uh, sadly, I'm not recording this time. I, I, I forgot to hit record when we started. So, if nothing's going through, then I, uh, we're gonna have, like, skipped sections. <laughs> Which will suck. Honestly, because it's still uh, red. No, that's an F. That is an F. Like I, I have internet too. It's just <gasps> we're we're not getting any feed. Like I'm super choppy. Oh, now we're yeah. green. Hey. Hey. Man, I'm probably just have to cut out that whole section. I'll listen to it, but. Ugh. <laughs> Nah, you'll be fine. It'll yeah, be fine. I'm not to write a note. Hit record when we start. <laughs> make a an alarm on the phone that goes off. At I was gonna say make a uh, record. <laughs> make like a scripts that when you hit a uh, start stream. No, no, because says, I start streaming. Don't forget to record. Oh shit! So yeah, yeah, yeah. When you when you click on the other scene it tells you don't forget to hit record no i just need to keep it in my mind to hit start recording prior to whenever i randomly unmute us to catch you in the middle of saying things true i guess just uh set an alarm yeah yeah that's probably the best way probably yeah because because you can name the l alarm like whatever the hell you want to um like say it what, what does my alarm say right now let me oh cool there's a watermelon outside waiting for me um what, 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 look at what my alarm says right now because i i always name them weird things it says i'm so fresh you can suck my nuts i'm so fresh you can suck my nuts swag I'm oh okay so, so i was suck. choppy but it was still going through most of the talk yeah i probably don't have to cut it out yet oh uh, right now nice. my alarm that's set um, for every single day of the week. I have it turned off. I need to turn it back on. That's probably why I got up so late. Uh, but just to make sure that I don't sleep past one because I need to be productive. Um, it says, yeah, get up, I need to do that. comma, sack of shit. Because <laughs> that's how I motivate myself. I, I motivate myself by uh, trash talking. And I find it very effective. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a fighter, you know? And I'm just, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. used to, like, smack talk and shit like that. But if I really need to motivate myself, I will look myself in the mirror and start trash-talking myself to get myself pumped up. It works way better than trying to motivate 
through like positive influence or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just sour for some people. Yeah. For me, it's kind of like telling me I can't do any something. Yeah. Like, what's fucked up is one of, I think I brought it up before on stream, but like my best friend was like, he kind of like, uh, I was joking around, I was like, yeah, well, when I become famous for streaming, and he was like, yeah, like that'll ever happen. Like, oh, and now it's kinda, gotta happen. Yeah, I was like, well, yeah, I was like, now, now, I was like, just now, when it fucking happens, you suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, but yeah, and that's why I've been such like a. That would make me so true. Yeah, Car Junior, two thousand six says that would make me start arguing with myself. Well, I'm not gonna say I don't argue with myself, but I think it can be kind of healthy. Just like, um... Yeah, it depends. You know, my dad was like, you know, healthy people don't talk to themselves. It's like, oh, psh. Dude, I, I talk myself through thinking all the time. I think it's very healthy to talk to yourself. The problem isn't when you start asking yourself questions. The problem becomes when you start answering questions you never asked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, I just, if, like, telling me I can't do something kind of, like, pumps me up. Yeah. That's why I like that whole thing, like, the whole you won't thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do or, something. And then you just reply with, like, bet. 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 You won't bet. And that's it, and then that's <laughs> it, I'm doing whatever. Unless it's, like, something really stupid. Exactly. <laughs> That's what. That's why I want to like. That's why I've been wanting to like stream so much lately. Like I want to, I want to stream like an unhealthy amount, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I want to stream to the point where it's noticed. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like, like noticeable. You, you like, gotta wow, this guy the work like day, right? If straight. most people work eight hours a day, you gotta be streaming ten or something like that. You yeah. Gotta, you gotta like, beat like, out. This. this this guy is streaming 12 hours straight. Holy shit. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean... Like... I'm gonna be like, listen. Now you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, I don't often I mean, get to look down on people friend, because but... most people are taller than me. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> he is taller than me, but not by much. Um, yeah, that's just how I get myself pumped. I just, well, I don't get myself pumped, really. It, it's like, I can't drink alone. <laughs> I cannot drink alone. I've tried. But if I'm around friends, shoot. Probably drinking a butt, bunch. Yeah. Or like, um, I'll go for a jog, right? And especially if you haven't gone over a while, sometimes it'd be hard to hit that uh, that long range endurance. So oh, I'll yeah, go for like sure. a mile or so, and at the very end, you can you can start to feel it winded, and I'll start like yelling at myself, shit talking, uh, just to get me to finish it off without stopping. Oh yeah, I no, I I do the same thing when I'm when I uh, when I work out. If I'm trying to get like, I don't really run, yeah. but if I if I'm lifting. I'm trying to get like those last couple. I'm like, come on, you son of a bitch, yeah. come on! To the point where, not that long ago, I ended up fucking up my arm because of it. I woke up the next day and I couldn't even like, I couldn't even touch my chest. Yeah. With my arm. Well, I also think it can be healthy too, right? Because it it kind of like mentally prepares you for other people. Because I've yet to hear another human being call me anything worse than what I've called myself. True. There's definitely, you know, you can't, that's, once you accept that, Yeah. so you know, you can't really say anything I haven't said to myself. Like, you're not, it's whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Depending yes. on what it is. But, uh... Yeah, I, um... <sighs> what are we talking about, man? I, I don't know. We got into some know. type of tangent, and then we started talking. Oh, because we brought up alarms. That's why. That's because right. Because we needed to set an alarm. We we were having problems from disconnecting because I forgot to hit start recording. <laughs> but apparently that's we're right. Fine. That's yeah. right. <laughs> oh, I, I know something I could talk about. I had some weird dreams last night. Weird or dreams. This morning. They better be well, some weird ass motherfucking dreams if you're going to be talking so, about the podcast. <laughs> So the thing is, they weren't like, like it wouldn't have been weird if it was only one dream. Yeah. But it was multiple dreams about the same place, but it was different versions of the place. Mm. And it's somewhere I used to live, but not in a good sense. So I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't think I've ever brought it up on the podcast, but I, maybe I told you, and I've definitely told your brother. But did I ever tell you about the place I lived in Pennsylvania? Uh, where it was, like, I think you brought place. up that you lived in Pennsylvania. I don't think you, you've ever talked about it. Like, we, we talked about uh, how it was, like, out in the middle of nowhere. And that's about it. Me rolling naked in Jello would be, wouldn't be a weird dream for me. Like, is this as be, weird as the time that the cloud just rolled away? The clown just rolled away. <laughs> just what? Rolled away. Rolled away. When did that happen? Why does this sound so familiar? <laughs> you were telling me about a dream you had one time, and like this oh clown just rolled up into a ball and just rolled away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the dream, but I remember that part. <laughs> that was oh the only God. part I remember about it. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! It just rolled away. And this had to be like what five years ago that you even said it's this. Probably like five or six. Somewhere maybe. around there. No, these dreams were about. So I lived in like a haunted ass house. All right. Yeah. Now, for people that's listening, I don't believe in ghosts or whatever. I don't have a choice to believe or, or to not to believe rather. And um, same. So this place was. It used to be a hospital, like, back in the early 1900s, late 1800s. And now it's a house. And I'm not going to tell the whole story, but just know there was a lot of shit that happened in that well, house. Well, we do have time to Maybe film, I'll... so you can tell as much of the story as you want. So, alright, so I'll tell the whole story. Alright. So, we moved into this big-ass house. It looked like, kinda, like a Victorian. Like an old Victorian. It had, like, a big, long wraparound porch. Yeah. And it was, like, uh, three stories. It was huge. But it's old as fuck, decrepit, fucking, uh, I don't think there was really, like, much, uh, what's it called? Insulation. So it was cold as hell. Uh, and, shit, what was I gonna say? (laughs) I don't know, you're the one telling the story. So, oh, it was really cheap. It was, like, $400 a month for this fucking house. Yeah, for his big ass house, four hundred dollars a month. Wow, that's weird. Why is it so cheap? Because so, it's <laughs> Now, I, here's an example of how old it had those like. I don't know how to explain how the doorknobs were. They're like, it was like a square or like a rectangle, and then the doorknob was on top, and then it had like a skeleton key keyhole on the bottom. Oh, okay. And I've seen those on my room, which my room was originally the, the children's like uh, hospital room. The, the lock was on the outside, so, you know, you could lock kids inside. And, uh... Yeah, yeah, you know, in case you not, ever needed to set the place on fire, you don't want the kids to escape. Of course, you, yeah, you, can, yeah, yeah. you don't want to pay for that shit. So, um... I slept in there, there's two beds. And, uh, eventually my sister's uncle moved in and he slept in, in the other bed. And then across from us was my mom and my sister in a room. She was only two years old at the time, so I was like, what, nine, ten? Yeah. And uh, and then next to her was my mom's friend, who lived there originally, by her fucking self, with just her and her big-ass Great Dane. And, uh, God, I don't know how she did it. This is one of those, like... 
Never mind. All right, so we're living in this house. There are a lot of weird shit happens. You know, we're playing life one day. We drop some pieces. The pieces completely disappear into the void. Never, never to be found again. Or it wasn't a piece. It was a card. Never to be found again. It was literally gone forever. I don't think that really has anything to do with paranormal, but it was never found. So, <laughs> um, another thing that happened is like a bat, like was in the living room. Yeah, that's not paranormal either, because bats lived in. She uh... <laughs> scared the ghost. True. <laughs> The, ba the bats lived in the attic. Like, the attic was off limits. That was now the bat zone. Alright? There was no yeah, getting rid of those over, bats. They colonize they the attic. Your army failed. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't go up there. That is the bat zone. There's bats that live up there. There's bat shit everywhere. It's just, you don't go in the attic. Plus, it's Water. an attic in a scary-ass house, so you don't want to go up there anyway. Um, don't, don't tell me I don't want to go up there, because I want to go up there. You get into so much cat, uh, bat shit, and... Oh, oh. So, I'll find now, that. so the, the way this house was laid out was um, there was a front door, which we didn't really use because it just went out to the street, and uh, the driveway was in the back. Now, this is in Pennsylvania, so it's like in bumfuck nowhere. Um, just it's the, it's the sticks. There's this big barn next to us that I wasn't allowed to go in, so I never did. I don't know what it looks like. And so normally we'd come in through the back, which would go into the kitchen mm -hmm. and dining room, which is like a small kitchen dining room. Then to the right would be, oh, I guess the right would be the dining room. And then it would be a living room. And then straight from where the door would be from coming outside, you could see the front door as well. Yeah. And next to the front door were the stairs going upstairs. And when you get to the top of the steps, there would be a platform in the middle. And then there'd be two stairs going right and two stairs going left. The two stairs going right went to the bathroom, which was an add-on. It wasn't originally there. Because I guess back in the day, they were using like outhouses and shit. And then to the left, it would go up to the three bedrooms. And then it would go up to the attic. So if you went to the left and then you turned left to go to the attic, there was a dresser and there was a bunch of porcelain dolls now i don't like porcelain dolls they freak oh, me dude, out those things are scary as fuck man <laughs> yeah they're creepy as fuck and they were just lined up sitting on the edge of this uh dresser and the whole time we're living there now me and my sister's uncle didn't notice but uh holly my mom's friend she kept she would fuck with us and turn the, some of the dolls heads sometimes <laughs> Just to fuck with us, and we would bring it up, and she would just act like nothing happened. She'd be like, what are you talking about? And uh, she was like, oh, you guys are messing with me. Meanwhile, it was her the whole time. But, uh... Yeah, we didn't know that, so that wasn't that one was debunked. But uh, that platform at the top... Debunked. Me and my Get mom... Bumped. Me and my mom would never step on it. Never. never. Ever. We stepped on it once, and we got, like a lightning strike down our spine and we were like fuck that we're not stepping on it anymore so if we ever went to the bathroom or went like up the stairs or down the stairs we would jump over it <laughs> we were just like nope not touching it and we didn't know why somebody died but there. uh we'll bring it up later we'll bring it up later so my sister like i said she was like two years old three years old and um actually i'll, I'll wait for this part so me and my sister's uncle one day, and it's just in the morning, probably like 11 a.m. noon, so barely morning. And we're just playing games. No one else is in the house. My mom's at work. My sister is at, like, uh, I think my mom's friend's house. And Holly's at work. So, which we didn't know. We thought she was there. And we're playing games, and we hear, we just hear people. Um, we just hear people talking downstairs. Oh, we got spoilers like in, in the, the kitchen. We just uh, we hear people talking <laughs> in the uh, living room or in the dining room, and it's just like clear as day, like uh, just a, like a woman, like a young woman, like probably like in early twenties. So. We're thinking, 
we're thinking it's Holly and her friend just talking in the living room. So we go downstairs to get, like, breakfast or whatever. And halfway down the stairs, the talking just stopped. Completely. And we're like, what the fuck? So we go into the dining room. No one's there. No one is there whatsoever. Just gone. So now we're freaking out. We run upstairs, grab the phone. And, uh... We, um... Call my mom, and we're like, hey, was Holly here with her friend? And she was like, no, she's been at work since 6 a.m. Or, like, 5 a.m. She was, a uh, she did, like, EMT work and shit. So. Um. Yeah. There was no one there. It was just. Now, mind you, there's two people that heard this. Alright, this isn't just me. This is me and my sister's uncle. And, uh. So that was, you know, that really freaked us out. Then, now here, here's the other, now here's the last big part. So, like I said, my sister was like two years old. And she started talking about this friend she had named Jacob. And we're like, who's Jacob? And she's like, oh, it's my friend. And she would always talk to Jacob and be like, oh, Jacob, stop, or hey, Jacob, come on, let's let's go play, or this is shit like that. And we're like, what the fuck? We're, you know, so my mom goes around to everyone she knows, the daycare, her friends, and she asks people, hey, do you, is there any kids named Jacob? Are there any kids named, anyone named Jacob? None. No one named Jacob. So, one night, it's like, I don't know, like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. It's like in the middle of the night. I don't, I didn't remember the time. My sister wakes up screaming, Jacob, stop, Jacob, stop screaming, crying. And my mom freaks out, turns on the light, and she, uh, she has a scratch on her face, across her cheek. Three, like, three, three marks uh -huh. across her cheek. And, uh, for that night, <laughs> my mom had me sleep in the room, and we all slept in the room with the light on. And it was really freaky. And I'm pretty sure shortly after this, we were moving. Like, I think it was already planned that we were moving. So, after we ended up moving, we decided to research. And we found out that like it was already spoiled in chat. Yeah. Multiple people hung themselves on the platform, on the, the landing, at the top of the stairs. Um, which would explain the chills. And like at once or at different times. Different times, like multiple, just multiple times over, yeah. like over. So the are, are you thinking that like because of the first person who hung himself, eventually drove each person to hang themselves on that platform too, if they stayed too long? Uh, mm, mm, I don't think so. I never oh. thought about it like that. I don't think it's any like X or uh, not X uh, like Amityville shit. But uh, well, I'm just saying like I think it's just th it's kind of weird coincidence that everybody hung themselves from that platform. There's so many ways you could take your life. True. I don't know if it, maybe it was just like the way it was. I have, I have no clue. Yeah. But maybe it's possible. I mean. There was many times where I'd look at it and I would just like, kind of, I don't know. There was like a light at the top, so it kind of confused when I thought about it like later on. But yeah, there wasn't always light a light there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's possible. I don't know though. I just know that it was like patience, like because the patients in here were like really sick yeah i mean this was like a place to die pretty much and yeah, yeah. uh because we uh, we actually ended up taking up the carpets and shit and like like linoleum and stuff and there was there was wooden floors under it and it was like clearly like really old blood stains like you can tell 
what a blood stain is. If you know what blood stains look like, you know the difference between blood and water. Yeah, yeah. Or like blood and, um, and raspberry jam. Yeah, I don't think they would <laughs> stay in the same way, but um. Who truly hung themselves? Who actually hung themselves? Well, I think True. he's insinuating that the other guy hung all the other ones. Nah, they were like years apart. Unless it was like some. Well, that, that's what he's insinu there. insinuating is that the ghost is the one that hung them. Oh, maybe. Yeah, we, I just kind of going like the what only... I was saying. But I didn't think he physically hung them. I just think the ghost would have kind of pushed them to it. Yeah, like mentally. So. That was that. We never found out what the voice in the kitchen was. But, um, for Jacob, we found out, like I said, my room was the room for the children. Um, there was, at one point, there were these two twins. I think they were like five or six years old. I know they were like young kids. And, uh,. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, they both had, like, tuberculosis. Yeah. So they ended up dying real early. And that's a very common way of dying back in the day. And uh, I don't remember the girl's name, because it doesn't matter. But uh, the boy's name was Jacob. And that freaked us the fuck out. Like, uh, it, like it's we asked around if there was any Jacob. There was none. Yeah. This was the only mention of the name Jacob anywhere in relation to the house or of my family. And it freaked us the fuck out to the point where apparently, I don't know, but apparent my sister to this day thinks that she is followed by him, mm -hmm. that he follows her. Um, which is kind of scary considering that she lives in my house right now. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, like Amityville Jody, true. And, yeah, so this house showed up multiple times last night in my dreams, but as different versions. They weren't, they weren't clearly the same house, but in my mind, they were that house. Like. Oh, they were like alterations you, of what it could be. Yeah. They were like really, like, decrepit, old, fucking creepy, like. There was one dream where I was inside of it, but the other ones I would not go inside. I was like, I'm not going anywhere near. I would like peek inside the windows, but that's it. I wouldn't go inside. It was such like an intense fear yeah. that I didn't want to go anywhere near it. And um, I don't know. It was so weird. Like I, I wanted to look up, or I did look up a little bit, but it doesn't seem related like one was like oh it means you're homesick for it i'm like i fucked that i'm homesick for it <laughs> well, there, i was like you guys uh... are retarded <laughs> oh well, i mean oh, maybe uh, maybe they came up because your sister's there yeah that's another that, thing that's, that's what, what thinking, actually right? that's what she said yeah she was messaging me uh, this morning when i was talking to her and i was talking to her about it and she was like uh what did she say She said, "Jacob, simple as that. That's yeah, all she said." If there's a familiar <laughs> presence, then your your brain is remembering it. That's its way of remembering. It, it could be like, a, a warning, like your your subconscious is trying to warn you about something. I sure would hope not. I don't want to deal with that. I haven't dealt with anything creepy here. I know there's creepy shit here. I live on Long Island. I tell oh, you all the time. Every house shit is on Long here. Island. The entire island is haunted. There's yeah. no if fans or buts. So. <laughs> Well, it's one of the earlier like, settlements the of the country. Of course, the whole place is going to be haunted. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, it's, I don't know. I have always thought that, like, spirits feed off fear. Like, they'll show more if you're afraid of them. Yeah. And, like, if you kind of just ignore them, that's why they, or they won't, like, show up. Which is kind of why I think people who don't believe in them whatsoever never have experiences. You know what I mean? 
Uh, there's, there's probably some level of truth to that. Though there's probably also a lot of exceptions. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, there, there's been people I know of Don't Believe who have experienced something and they were just like, what the fuck? They were like, I don't know. Like, and they, they were really to... big non-believers. Yeah, yeah, like, they, they and refused then to even something happened what to them. Fear feed suggestion. Yeah, that's true. true. Um, uh, I've also been in those yeah. circumstances where I just, I don't have a choice, right? Yeah. Like, it's just... Like, I'm, I'm still super skeptical about everything, but... Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I've had enough real experiences that I have um, informed skepticism. Yeah. Exa exactly. Like, that's the thing. is, is if Anyone that knows me knows I'm not just, like, gonna sit there and believe anything someone says. Like... Especially if it's not completely proven, but that's the thing, is it's like 99.9% .9 proven to me. Yeah, yeah. The only reason I even give that 0.1% is just because of what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um... Because you know I have a follower. Yeah. Yeah, you told me about that too. But you yeah. can talk about it. <laughs> I don't think we've yeah, talked I'm about realist, it on the podcast exactly. yet. Sure, you can bring it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, know, you can ask Matt. He'll, he'll verify this, too. Or it, it, Joey needs to come on the podcast sometime. I need to wrangle him on here. He's never been on the podcast. And I keep telling him he needs to be on here. But uh, we I was actually talking with him about this stuff not too long ago. There's a... Man, it would take me way too long to uh, find the thread in Discord because how often we exchange messages with each other. But we, we yeah. were talking about this stuff recently. And funny enough, I was talking about the same story on a friend stream he was doing campfire stories about like ghost stories and stuff and that exact yeah. same night joey who had no idea whatsoever that i was going to be telling that story or that i was even on a stream telling stories had the same conversation with his roommate oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i remember I told you telling about me about that, that. Just, yeah and I thought that was weird as fuck, right? Because we were having it at about the exact same time when you actually were to rewind the clock to when I was saying it and when he told me he was saying it. But um, uh, we're not sure what this thing is supposed to be. I have a theory that I think I was supposed to be a twin and the my, my fetus just consumed the other. Uh, prior to uh, detection and yeah. ever through my entire life as far back as I or anybody else could remember I had a friend who appeared like me right at first I thought it was an imaginary friend because I, I you know you watch TV you learn about these things um, but it's weird because even early on you kind of learn that imaginary friends tend to be a result of uh, yeah like a phantom twin Imaginary friends tend to be like a result of trauma, and I hadn't experienced any trauma in my life, so I was already kind of skeptical of that at a very young age. Yeah. But uh, what got weird was when other people started seeing it too, right? Because for me, it was just my playmate, right? Even when Matthew came around, uh, he didn't advance as fast as I did because I, I advanced really fast in every regard. Uh, so, he he wasn't a playmate for a while, and I already had, like, two years on him. So, for, like, three or four years of my life, the, the only really close friend I had was this phantom twin. And I would even play video games with this thing, you know, like, on the NES. And there would be some high scores that were usually better than mine, and my parents just assumed, you know, it was me putting in another name, haha, -ha, playing... Uh, and then the, the first encounter that anybody else had with this entity was one time my mom put me down for a nap. And the house we lived in at the time was a horseshoe, right? So the mm -hmm. kitchen and the dining room were in the middle. And then there was a room on one side that I think was converted out of a garage that uh, led into the backyard as well. And then there was a, room, uh, a slight hall in the two rooms on the other side of the house. And she put me down to sleep in the master bedroom. 
And on her way back to the kitchen, she saw what she thought was me running. Now, she already didn't even put two and two together. There's no way I could have gotten past her in that time, right? So she chases yeah. this thing down to the other side of the house, and when she dead ends at the other side, it's gone. And she rushes back, and I'm still fast asleep in the uh, master bedroom. Hadn't even moved an inch. And that was her first encounter. And then everybody's had many encounters with this thing over the years. Uh, when we moved to Cedar Hill, uh, which is where we lived for 15 years of my life, that house alone was super haunted. And honestly, I'm going to say I'm glad I had this Phantom Twin because that might have been a buffer between me and everything else that was there. Um... But, yeah, Matt's told me about that place. Yeah, that that place was like a proverbial s truck stop for spirits, right? Was that, was that the place where I think Matt said he went there recently and he just had like a really, like, undesirable feeling? Like he just, when he passed by? Yeah, he said he like went to go look at it or something and he just felt very unwelcomed. Yeah. Oh, I passed by that place all the time too when I go for walks because I live we live in the same neighborhood now that we used to it's like it's literally like a block and a half down the street and I won't say I get unnerving feelings because I just I don't know I think I've become callous to that stuff mm -hmm. but I do still feel like things are there I, I I've kind of wanted to ask the family that lives there if they ever seen anything or thing like that but I have bad dreams about that place still, especially the closet of the room that uh, Matt and I used to share when we were younger. Speaking of uh, Car Jr.'s uh, get out thing, like I've had some really bad dreams about that uh, closet. It did also get converted into a meth lab at one point in time and blow up after we left. <laughs> Okay, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, they're, they're, that place is just cursed, right? So, one time we were there, every single person was in the uh, living room together. All of us, right? There's five people that lived in the house at the time. Me, both my brothers, my mom and my dad. We were all in the living room watching a movie. And all of a sudden, we hear... Uh, when we see a light flip on in the room that was uh, the playroom at the time it, was, it became my room eventually later on but it's not like a full room it's an office space and you know it's uh, supposed to be an office space because it's like half the size of the other rooms and it only has a half closet in there yeah uh, but we used it as a playroom until I was old enough that I required my own room uh... oh hey Duggar's here Oh. Yeah. I feel like it's been. I cannot hear what you're saying. Yeah, you sound like uh, under attack. I. Oh! Faulty balls, Mr. Garrison. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just telling about my weird haunted experiences growing up. Oh, okay. Those are fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're all yeah, living fun. together. There's no one in the rest of the house. And we hear the... Uh, or we see the light go on in this room. It was off. Nobody could have turned it on. And all of a sudden, we hear a step piano playing on its own. And, it, you know, we had animals at the time. But literally all the, the two dogs that we had at that time were in the room with us as well. So it's not like anything was walking across this. So we go in there. And the light switch is physically flipped on. So it wasn't like some type of weird power thing. And my dad wraps up the piano. Puts it in the closet. Turns the light off. Goes back out. Then like 15 minutes later. The light switches back on again. And we hear the piano playing. From being rolled up in the closet. And, uh, whew, we th thought that was the end of it because he took the batteries out. So the piano didn't play after that, but the light switch flipped back on like three more times throughout the night. 
And it was just like, this is actually a fairly regular occurrence, too. Not not so much the piano thing, but just this uh, phantom twin running around playing pranks on people. Didn't seem benevolent. Just like to be, have fun, you know? A little kind of like Loki-style trickster, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think it's still around, too. It, it follows me. But if it is a phantom twin, then uh, who else would it follow? Right? True. Oh, real yeah. quick. Because I just opened the internet up, and Facebook is my homepage. Can I talk about how annoying this new Facebook layout is? Oh, yeah. yeah it the, is uh, gross. And I don't want it, but I, they're forcing us because they're douchebags. Wait, I did mean, change again? Just like everything else, they, uh, you know, it happens a lot. And eventually we get used to it, and then once we're, like, finally really used to it, they change it again. Is it the one that's kind of, like, all bubbly to match the phone layout? It, yeah, it's, it's the mobile layout, but on... Uh, okay, I've had this for a while, because I know they, they roll it out in waves. Well, no, I keep turning it off. They've been they've been putting it for me forever, but I keep turning it off. And yeah, I didn't bother turning it off because I knew they were going to make it a permanent upgrade anyway. It is really ugly. Yeah. yeah. It's gone back to being not fucking... Uh, most recent news feed. And I don't know how to fix it. Yeah. I don't know. See, it's fine to me. I mean, it is it is ugly. I don't like the way it looks, but... I, I'm Stop not a fan it. of Facebook. <laughs> I use it because, like, True. people I know are on it, and for some people it's literally the only way I can communicate with them. But as far as social media, Same. I always thought it was kind of a garbage site, like, just the way it's set up. Same. Bring back MySpace. Oh yeah, we had a whole podcast about that too, man. Like, bring we back did. MySpace the way it was. All right, I want you to listen to to Headstrong when you come on my MySpace. But no, God. <laughs> so what you're saying is we need to design our own MySpace. Uh, yeah, except call it something not MySpace because I think that we'd still get in trouble for that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you're okay with me working purely as a like management, because <laughs> I'm not doing any coding, I no, can do I some design. Gonna, I wasn't gonna do coding either. <laughs> I figured we'd just find some you know kid in China and pay him below minimum wage to do it for us. I mean, I know I have friends that code, but uh, getting them to do anything is kind of hard. We just call it no, that sounds like all of my friends. <laughs> True. Uh, you you also have let me downers as friends. I see. Everyone does. Yeah. Don't we all? <laughs> I've been trying to play Among Us with the with my friends for so long, and it just. I mean, oh, dude, no. I've got uh, such I'll let like me downers fun. for friends that I didn't have a co-host for two weeks straight. Listen. <laughs> All right. So here, here's, 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 uh, here's the reason for that. Um, I was asleep. <laughs> yeah. See, he was asleep, so I had to leave for two and a half weeks. <laughs> that sounds reasonable. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. No, I was, I was dealing with shit and real life shit and just took over my life to the point where I wasn't even on my computer at all. I didn't do nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, I guess I did do stuff. It just wasn't on the, not on the internet. No, if you're not on the internet, you stop existing for that time. True. Everybody knows that. That's, That's true. Trying to he get was. Trump banned off the internet because they know that if they do, he just disappears. True, pretty much. That's what every time I'm gone. If I'm gone for like a, a day, my friends like you did. Oh well, yeah, I died. See, my friends don't care about me that much. 
If I don't post anything, they, you know, don't do anything. Oh, dude. I'm kind of like the center of my friends, though. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> well, I have that problem, too, because at a certain time, especially during high school, um, I would have anywhere from 5 to 15 uh, chat logs on Facebook open at one, any point in time. Because everybody Jeez. was trying to get in contact with me. So it, it is kind of hard remembering, like, to reply to somebody, you're, like, reading back three messages in that uh, response just so you can kind of, like, remember which conversation you were in. Um, but after my cousin JT died, I think I was off the internet for an entire month straight, and people were literally messaging me wondering if I was still alive. Jeez. <laughs> I'd love to be able to stay away for that long. Yeah. A month? I mean, I did do it a lot of stuff. I did have a lot of fun. But, uh... We're not too young. We just... Well, I mean, technically... We... I am too young for there to be a time with no internet because the internet well yeah a time with no internet the year before I was born true but I mean I like I uh, was alive for a couple years without it but do you remember it I barely remember last week <laughs> but so the thing is <laughs> well, like a point where I relied on the internet yeah a lot of my life I didn't rely on the internet um but considering we do like this, and I stream, and I talk to most of my friends on the internet. Well, the internet's become a really big part of life, in general. I was born into the internet era, but I didn't rely. I didn't rely on it until I was an adult. Yeah, like, it wasn't like a big deal until I was an adult, and it became a platform. What would be funny too is like I, even though I would have all those tabs up. For the most part, I wouldn't be on the internet until maybe 9 o'clock in the evening. Because after school, you're just out and you're playing all day. Not yeah, doing the homework yeah, exactly. you're supposed to be doing. I used to go out to the woods and do all types of shit. We had a, uh, a park uh, around here. That uh, big wooden one where everybody would meet up. It's called the Virginia Weaver. It was right next to, uh, between like the main junior high before they built the second one in the high school. And we, we would be hanging out there until sundown. Yeah, I mean, even all the way up until probably, I think, senior year. Well, I know senior year I was going out to the club, so, I mean, that was my weekends. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I'm pretty sure all the way up because... I hung out with Gage a lot, and we would always go to the woods and, like, go to the creek and just hang out. I mean, yeah, we played video games, too. I think everyone played video games with yeah. their friends every now and then. Listen, but, man, uh, the only club in I do is Seals. Same. Yeah. Gotta get that, uh, blubber. How else am I gonna survive the winter? But, yeah, no, I mean, payphones, no, I, I, I have used a payphone with change <laughs> I had to break it a couple dollars um there is a payphone uh in this city in front of the the Whataburger for like the longest fucking time really yeah yeah I'm talking about like even after I graduated high school I think the cord was cut but like it still technically operated there was just no phone there but the payphone I don't I don't even know if it's still there but it was just sitting there in front of the Whataburger forever they never removed it. I always liked the way the payphone numbers felt. Um, All like the buttons. Me and sick. <laughs> no. Next time I go to that city, I'll I'll see. Well, I'm actually there. I just have not gone I know. by Whataburger in a while. I haven't either, so it makes sense. Yeah. There's only like skeletons of payphones now. Yeah. Well, there was always skeletons in payphones. How do you think they operated? Oh, fuck. 
I wasn't even thinking about that. I was wondering why my stomach turned. But no, there was always like a shell was left there. Like you're like, oh, that was. It's like the same thing with like old Pizza Hut restaurants. Yeah. Well, like, you can tell what building like. No, that building used to be a Pizza Hut, or like Blockbusters sometimes. Or Taco Bell. Or Ta- Taco Bell still alive. Or like you can tell if something used to be that building. Because of the sign, yeah, it looks like a bell. Yeah. Or like, or the, uh, the just... even at, like a Sonic that didn't make it in an area, and they uh, built yeah. a fashion drive through set up. Like you know that used to be a Sonic. Well, there's yeah. that. There's that water burger a couple miles away from where I live, that or that used to be a water burger, and now it's some taco place. Oh, but it's got like the really high ceiling that water burgers have. Yeah. It's it's got it it looks just like a water burger on the outside. <laughs> yeah, I say with the Sonic where I used to live in Garland, there was a place that clearly used to be a Sonic and it was like some like Cajun fish place. Near that location you used to live by, every time we drove past it you'd be like, Hey, I used to live in that area. Yeah. You should look at that stuff in that area. I'm not reading shit anymore. Okay. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Well, so growing up too, we always had a nickname for the Whataburger because the way they had like the really high ceiling, right, with the roof. There's uh support beams that go across to the ceiling area, and they look like uh, Triforce. So we always just called it the Temple of Time. (laughs) It's like, hey, we're gonna go meet up at the Temple of Time. Man. Especially, like, when I didn't have right. access to the internet at home because, you know, we were always poor. We were losing access to cable internet all the time. I would just, like, take my laptop up in uh, high school and be like, where are you going? To the Temple of Time? Because I had free Wi-Fi at uh, Whataburger. Tommy, I need you to do something for me if I ever come down there to visit. Or if you guys come up here to visit. Don't we slap you? I need you. No, 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 no. It's kind of in the same category, but I need you to throw a spider onto Matt. Oh, okay. So I can beat the shit out of him. Oh, okay. So because so you, you were trying to get the spider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because oh. when that one time he got a spider on me, he was like, oh, "There's a spider on me! Beat the shit out of me!" And I did. I whooped his ass. And he couldn't, he wasn't even mad because he told me to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I want to whoop his ass, so it gives me a valid reason. I, I thought you were going to ask me to come up there and beat the shit out of your ghost. My ghost? No, I'm going to have to fight him. Oh, okay. Uh, there have been times where I felt like I was like, I woke up and there was like clearly something looking at me from the closet. I say clearly, but like <laughs> it was nighttime. Yeah. But like I could feel it. I could feel it. And at this point in my life, I could feel if there's something there. Uh, I don't, it sounds weird to people who don't deal with this shit, but once you get like attuned to it, you, you can fucking feel it. At least like someone watching you and stuff. Um, but like I would just feel something in the closet, look directly into the closet because it would be like cracked open because my cat liked going in there. Yeah, which yeah. I hated because I don't like closet doors being open or mirrors. And I uh, my apartment. I I cannot stand. I used to hate um, sleeping over Matt's place because of his fucking closet. Yeah. Um, I didn't hate it, but it was there was a lot of light in there. So, but uh, yeah. Well, dude. Yeah, the worst uh, part too, uh, especially if you're talking about uh, the Arlington apartment, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Because the you had to go past the closet to get into the bathroom at night. True. Right, right? And it wasn't just you. Uh, there was only the one bathroom. Because there was only the one room. And I lived in... what We converted the dining room into, like, another room. Right? Yeah. So I would have to go in there and then cross by, because if anybody was sleeping on the floor or whatever, to get into the bathroom at night. So then, if yeah. you woke up, and I had already turned the light off or whatever, 
you just see this figure like walking by from the closet area. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, like, what's another thing that's I, I just remembered is that r directly across from the closet entrance is, is a, a fucking mirror. Yeah. So yeah. it's literally two of my least favorite things <laughs> at nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> and they're right there. You can't look either way. You have to just look straight. Either way, put, you end up just looking put into blinders the closet. On. Huh? Because either way, you end up looking into the closet. Exactly. So you just have to put blinders on. You should close your eyes when you walk past. Yeah. It's not. Nah, it's just too creepy, Uncle. Listen, this was in Texas, and you weren't there, so it couldn't have been. Um. <laughs> I I don't walk That's around with blinders on, on, even in the dark. Mirrors are the entrance to hell, exactly. So... No, no, no. See, Van Helsing taught me that's how you get to Dracula's lair. It's like hell, just cold and on Earth. Oh, not hell at all. So you call it cold as hell? Yeah, cold as hell. You know where that phrase comes from? Is the Nordic Helheim no. is frozen. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. That's the cold as hell. Never thought about that. It's actually where the modern term now, for hell comes from. Now I know how to um, make those people who think they're so smart shut the fuck up. Yeah. But cold's not hell. Or <laughs> ignore it. Ignore what I said. Ignore what I said. Well, you for know some what I people, meant. the cold is hell. <laughs> First of all, I love the cold. It's not hell to me. Or else I love hell, which is a possibility. But. So I never got to finish the closet story, alright? <laughs> it's not really a story, but I just... I literally looked directly into the, the crack, and I said... I said, go fuck yourself, and I turned over and went back to sleep. This is, a, this is the, that's Twitch, where I was it. at that point. Huh? So if you're on Twitch, clip it. <laughs> I legit don't know what he said. What happened? Oh, he said cold's not like hell. Cold's not <laughs> <laughs> oh, cold snot hell. Um, cold snot hell. Yeah. That sounds even worse. That's gross. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I that's that's what the point I got to. I just feel like fuck off, and then I would just, <laughs> just like go away. Leave me, leave me alone. Let me sleep. There was this one dream I had at that apartment that freaked me the fuck out. It was weird. It, I think it was like um. What's it called? Astral projection? Oh, yeah. Because everything was in place the way it should have been. Like, it was exactly the same as it was in real life. Like, clothes on the floor, everything. Oh, yeah. That yeah, there was clothes on the floor. But if, never have I ever had, like, a, a dream so perfect. And what what's funny is at the time, my friend Austin actually was staying with me. Only for a little bit, because he was visiting from Louisiana. And, uh... He was sleeping in the living room, in the dream. So, in, in the dream, I woke up to go pee. And it had a very, like, uh... Like, like a foggy... Yeah, like an almost kinda. nostalgic memory type uh, feel to it. Like, yeah, like yeah, like, it was, it was in my... It was definitely, like, I felt like I woke up in my room, but everything was very foggy and blue. It hazy, like, yeah. It was like... Yeah. And I've actually had I remember, that in this very house. <laughs> I, I remember going into the bathroom, going pee, and my phone's in my right hand, and I saw like these shadows or something and talking from under the other door. Because the way my way it were, was was we had one bathroom, and there was two doors that go into the bathroom, one from my room and one from the living room. So the door to the living room, it was like there was people there, like it, it not just people. It sounded like a whole fucking like like a dining room of like a restaurant like there was like lots of people and like things clashing and just, like it sounded crowded and i started freaking out i remember trying to call my mom in my in my uh dream like i went to my contacts everything went to mom tried to call her and i was freaking out and uh like all of a sudden, I just hear, like, a loud, like, wind. Like, I hear, like, a slam. Like, a whoop, whoop, And I hear, whoop, like, really loud wind. And, like, everything went away. Like, all the noise went away. And I opened up the door 
the living room and it was normal. Like it was just like the way it was. Like I saw yeah. Austin sleep in there, everything. And it freaked me out and I ran back into my bed and And then you woke up? That's when that's when I woke up, yeah. yeah. That that's usually that's when I wake up is when I get back to the bed. Right? Because the last time that that happened to me, it was funny enough, I had a similar circumstance. I, th This room, if you go out the door right there, go down the hallway, the bathroom is like right across from where I am right now. Right? And I had one of those, like, I don't know why it is when you have those type of things. Probably because the first thing you do when you wake up is go to the bathroom. Right? Like your brain is yeah. just so trained to that. That um, I was in the restroom and making my way back to the room. Probably just on well, the I had to go pee. Yeah. Like when I woke up, I had to go pee at when that happened. Yeah, yeah. But that's always the very first thing I do when I get up is I go straight to the bathroom to pee. So yeah. you, you're probably sitting at the end of your dream sequence. Like that's that lucid moment. But you, like you know, you have to pee and you go. But it doesn't really resolve the problem. Like you still kind of feel like you have to pee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, though nothing at strange don't happened that at that time. There's no like shadowy figures or anything like that but it, the last time that something like that happened it was a similar moment of going to the bathroom I actually had yeah, a it's, really, it's so crazy that, really like, strange experience like I said I didn't see anything like right. I didn't I it was all noise and like shadows from under the door because I didn't want to open the door I was like I was afraid to yeah until like that wind and bright light came from under the door and I was just like what the fuck was that and um, it was just, you wanna I don't know. I, I think, strange? huh? You want to hear something real strange? What's up? So I had recently, uh, in this bed right here, I had a couple of experiences with, I believe, the same entity. is probably the one that's been following me around. Like I said, I like to play pranks on people. So I've never experienced sleep paralysis in my life. <laughs> like, Ever. And, um, not too long ago, I usually sleep on my chest, right? I, I sleep face down if I can. And it's yeah. probably another reason why I've never experienced sleep paralysis. Because usually when you do, it's because you're lying on your back and there's compression from the, um, what's it called? The, uh, the cervix, right? Cervix? That girls, isn't that what girls have? There's like six the cervixes. No, well, it's on the sternum, but there's like six cervixes in the body. That's the, um, there's one for the lungs, too. That's how you, whatever. Um, no, you're thinking of the vaginal th cervix, or the, um, the, th there's a specific name. It's the uh, pelvic cervix, right? It, it's a type of muscle. That, that's what it is. Oh. Um, just like, did you know there's, uh, I think it's five? rectums in your body, but the only one anybody ever knows about is the one for your anus, the anal rectum. <laughs> but it's a, it's a certain type of constricting muscle. You've got one at, like, the end of your stomach and stuff like that, too. Or is it We're the not top? talking about space. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, so I'm in the bed, and I'm laying down, and I know it's time to get up. Like, I don't think I'm in a dream state or anything in this one. It doesn't have that fuzzy feeling or anything. And yeah. it's time to get up, and I'm going to get up, but I feel like this heavy weight on my back keeping me from getting up. And I'm like, I'm pushing up, and I hear giggling on top of me. And I'm there for like three minutes trying to push up, but I'm having, I'm not able to get there at all until I finally say, get the fuck off me. And then I hear one last giggle, and the weight disappears. And then I just get up. And I it's not like I woke up either. Like, I feel like I was fully cognizant this entire time. Because there wasn't, like, a separation of state. I just got back up. And that was... Three months ago? Maybe? Maybe two? But then more recently, uh, a few weeks ago... I, I think I actually was lying on my back, so it could have been some form of sleep paralysis. I've just, I've never had sleep paralysis before. And I'm lying there, but I'm not, like, totally on my back. That's, that's why I don't I think it was sleep paralysis. 
Because I'm, like, on this slight, like, angle. One of my legs is up on the bed. It's bent up and everything. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of awake, but it's got, like, that fuzziness to it, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, uh, this person that, that's entirely shadow gets up fast, crawling on the bed. Right? I, I really couldn't make out the form... I, I want to say it was a girl because it, it had like these palms like a teddy bear but they could have been just like really tight pigtails but it was it's all shadow so you can't really make out anything and this thing just rushes on the bed and starts like shaking me like it wants in and I'm sitting there for like a few seconds or so and I'm like trying to get myself up I'm trying to get myself up and then all of a sudden, I just like get up and headbutt this thing, and I asked if it wanted to die, and then it's lying on the ground there and just disappears. And then I wake up. But I wake up in the exact same position that I found myself sleeping before. I don't know, it was a very weird experience, and it felt real. Like I, you know, I, I felt like I had bruises on me from that. Yeah. I think I did. It's just been a few weeks ago, so I don't remember exactly. But I think I did have, like, a bruise here and here. But it was, like, a very, very real experience. At least in feeling. It doesn't necessarily mean it was, because you can hallucinate and it can feel very real. And I, I don't think it's a lucid dream, because uh, nearly all my dreams are lucid. Right? I've never well, had lucid to dreams myself. are ones where you're aware it's a dream. Yeah, yeah. And I've never had to teach myself the lucid dream. I just kind of naturally dream lucidly. Not always in control of it. Shit. Like sometimes I'm navigating through, but I'm aware that I'm in a dream the whole time. Every time I become aware, I get really excited, and then it, shortly after I become aware that it's it's a dream, I fucking wake up. Yeah. I get angry. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? My only sense of freedom, and you fucking take it away from me in like 30 seconds. Come on. Like, I was aware that it was going to happen the last time I had one. Like, I was, I was like, the last time I had a lucid dream, I was in Texas, and I was actually at my mom's. Damn, it's been that long. It's been like two years then. And, uh, I like went out to the bathroom, and it was like way different. Like, the, diff the bathroom was way different. Everything yeah. else was the same, but the bathroom was different. Like, it was, like, remodeled. Like, a lot. And I saw my sister, and she was like... I was like, what happened in the bathroom? She was like, oh, they remodeled it overnight. I was like, yeah, they did all this overnight when I was sleeping and I didn't wake up. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, bullshit. And she was like, no, it happened. And uh, so I'm already calling bullshit. I'm like, there's no way. And then what happened is I go into... So, it's like the shower is, like, a big fucking locker room shower now. Yeah. Like, just, like, a bunch of room, and it's, like, all open. Like, the sink is open, and it's all it's all open. There's just, like, one door that goes into it. It was actually really cool. I like this design. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I'm, like, brushing my teeth, and then some girl I've never seen in my life before walks in, and I see her in the mirror, and I turn around, like, who are you? And she was like, oh, you, you know, I'm, uh, you know me. I don't remember what this. I don't think this she said name. I was like, okay, this is just this is a dream. I was, like, I was, I was like, this is a dream. I was like, I'm gonna wake up really soon. And she was like, what? What are you talking about? And then boom, I wake up. I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I was so upset because, to look, like, once you're aware, you can do whatever you want. But <sighs> well, I, well, I guess maybe that's the way for most people. And as uh, Car Junior says, that always happens uh, once you realize you're dreaming, you wake up. That's not how it works for me, though, right? Because I'm pretty much always aware that I'm dreaming. It's just most of the time, it, it's all, it's almost like a video game, right? Like, I'm aware I'm in a dream. I'm just kind of along for the ride, but I'm the one actively making decisions. I know their decisions in a dream, so I don't really care if I fuck up the decisions or anything like that. I've died in dreams before. Like, actually, not Yeah, I actually, I, I have died in dreams as well. Yeah. Like, I've been crushed to a pulp that just ended up pulling myself back together. There was this one time where things don't even work this way, so it kind of just, like, I think I woke up from being pissed off. 
but we were like watching a rocket launch from a safe distance and the rocket goes up and kind of just arcs over still facing upwards over to where we are and comes back down and just incinerates all of us and then i'm just in like an empty white void for like a few minutes and i got like so pissed i'm like physics don't even work that way that i like woke myself up <laughs> it's it what's weird is that like it's always when I'm, like, having fun that I wake up, or, yeah. like, when I'm, like, aware I could have fun that I wake up. But if I'm ever in a dangerous situation in a dream, and I'm like, please wake up, please wake up, please wake up, I won't fucking wake up. And it's like, <laughs> it's not fair. It's like, uh... I, when I'm about to, like, almost die or something, I'm like, please wake up, I don't want to fucking deal with this anymore. But, you know, when I'm, like, dick slapping people for fun... Yeah. I wake up. Come on now. See, I've never had that problem. Like, ever. <laughs> ever. You right? get dick, so you just get to dick slap people every time you go to sleep? Well, I, I don't really dick slap people, but... Uh... <laughs> no, I'm talking about, like, <laughs> being in a dangerous situation. Because he, since I'm aware that I'm asleep... dreams can't make him big enough to dick slap people. <laughs> F. Uh, can we get... Not nice. F's in chat, please. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, no, what was I was saying. Oh, so uh, because I'm always aware, right? Even if the situation is dangerous or frightening, this is why I, I don't have nightmares, right? Because I kind of like am thrilled to be in those dangerous situations, being the fact that I'm always aware that I'm in a dream, right? And I will write it out. And I'll find out wherever it goes. It doesn't matter. The only time I wake up, and I can kind of force myself to wake up whenever, is when I get pissed off. Like, for example, uh, I had, like, one of those zombie apocalypse streams. I was having a great time. I had a sword. I was just cutting people apart. But then all of a sudden, Matt gets bit by a zombie. And I just had, like, this mental wear of all of, like... I really don't want to have to psychologically deal with the fact that my brother might be turning into a zombie right now and I woke myself up. Shit. Yeah. Every time I have a fucking nightmare. Like, see, the thing is, like, the, the dreams I talked about that I had last night, the ones with the house with multiple versions. Yeah. I wouldn't consider those nightmares. Could have Even though I did one. feel, like, a deep fear from them. Yeah. But I wasn't, a. Uh... Like, I don't know. I, I didn't. I don't consider them. I just considered it like a scary dream or like a creepy dream, weird dream. Yeah. I wouldn't consider it a nightmare. Because I've had other dreams of like haunted houses, but it's not like the one. It's not. I don't relate it in the, to the one I lived in. Yeah, yeah. It's just like the same. This this haunted house that shows up multiple times. It's always in different situations, but it showed up multiple times in my dreams in different places same house though and it's i fucking hate it like it's it's like very haunted and it's the the the, the amount of fear i feel from it is just like i don't know it's just like it hurts like it's like pain physically painful how much fear like is in, in induced from that fucking house okay you keep like, talking I, i'll wake up that. like i'm gonna okay. urinate Okay. I but, going to urinate. But yeah, it, it's just like I wake up with just like this pain in my chest and just like like I'm I'm just like shook. I'm like fucking shaking and I uh, I just I have to like take like 5 to 10 minutes to just like calm down. That's how bad it is. And uh, I don't know why cuz I don't think I've ever seen ghosts in those dreams and those nightmares like they're there but i don't think i've actually seen them like i think they're just like i don't know it's so weird i i either rarely ever have dreams or i uh don't remember them a lot of people who yeah a lot of people don't remember them I've always been very, uh, very, 
I don't know. I, I always remember a good amount of my dreams per night. I yeah, actually, huh? Every once in a while, I I'll remember dreams, but it's not super often. Like I, I know I know it's something like we have like thirty or some so dreams a night or something. So I mean, I don't remember all of them. Like I remember like like last night I remembered like five, which is a lot. <laughs> like five different instances, which I, I I would consider a lot. But like I said, they were all like the same place. There was one that wasn't. There was one that was a bit different. But uh, they were all the same place, but different, like not real versions of it, I guess. Yeah. It was just kind of like I don't know how to explain it. I don't see in Texas. Have you guys ever drove by like I don't know, like an old house that's just like shut down and that's been shut down for a long time? Yeah. Like no one lives there. It's just like abandoned. The windows are boarded up. Maybe. So that's kind of how the house was like in my dream like each each of them all kind of had the same feel like it was like shut down no one lived there it's boarded up and it was very unwelcoming this I'm talking about the the dreams I had last night Tommy not oh I, I figured you were still talking about that well because the nightmare house is a different one yeah yeah and that's what we're gonna call it for now on we're gonna call it the nightmare house um but yeah, the Nightmare House is, is its own entity in my mind that I don't know what it is. Because like I said, while you weren't here, is I, I've never seen the ghosts in those nightmares, but I felt them. And the, the, I don't know, just the feeling of them being there gives me the the like intense fear. I have a couple different but, Nightmare Houses. But the Pennsylvania House, in my dreams last night, they were all like... Like I said, they're all different versions, but they all had that, like, shut down, old, no one lives there feeling. Like, they're, like, boarded up, like, you shouldn't be there. And, uh, it was weird. The first one, the first stream, I, I actually stood in the house for some reason. I was sleeping. But it was, like, just like a mattress, like, in the middle of the fucking floor, and I was sharing it with people. And it was, like some kind of like generic like murderer like 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 jason or fucking yeah. texas chainsaw massacre type of uh mo like monster i guess and i was like lighting him up with a gun it was like a video game almost and then the other ones there was multiple where i was like they were it was like in the middle of a city it was kind of like a like a mansion ish type thing in the middle of like a little town or like a, not town, but like a neighborhood, I guess. And uh, I don't know. It was just like one big building surrounded by a bunch of little buildings. And uh, there was one where there was like five different people, and they were all like ghosts, but they they weren't like ghosts at first. Like I thought they were real people, and then they like show they showed me that they were like no. Nah, where we live here, and then they like disappeared. It's like, nah, fam, you're wrong. <laughs> <fucker. laughs> nah, we we was fake the whole time. Yeah, that freaking fucker. That was the last one I had before I woke up. But there was a bunch in the middle where like it was just like I just went there with like, oh, I remember I went there with like my aunt for some reason, and she was like, let's go inside, and I was like, no, I was like, fuck that, I'm not, I'm not going inside there. Can she lift 50 times her own body weight? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. I don't think she could lift half her body weight. Um. <laughs> it's fucked up to say, but it's true. Um. But, uh. Yeah, it was weird. I don't know. It was fucking strange. It was... I don't know. It was, I kind of... See, the reason I think I would consider it a dream and not a nightmare is because I kind of enjoyed the feeling. Like, obviously, I was like, no, fuck that. But I kind of, like... Reminiscing on it from, like, now till from then is, like... 
It didn't cause an intense amount of fear where it hurt. Like the Nightmare House. But it was kind of like an enjoyable fear, you know? Yeah. And no. It's, it's probably no, kind of like how I, I describe all of what most people would consider my negative dreams. Like, I'm living. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's probably how. Yeah. Oh, it's weird. Like, I have a lot of dreams, probably because I spent 15 years of my life there, uh, in that, that house, uh, let's see, front there, so that way. That house is, like, right down the street. Um, some positive, a lot negative, probably far more uh, negative dreams at that place than uh, positive. Like, um, for example, as I was alluding to earlier, the, the room that Matthew and I shared for the longest time growing up had some weird mojo to it in its own. And I have, like, recurring dreams of lying uh, in, like, the bunk bed. And the closet is just, like, shaking. Like, the door is shaking violently. Like, really Jesus. hard. And you just hear, like, this really, really deep, disgruntled, like, laugh. Like, And it's just oh. like all the time and sometimes you do kind of hear like a get out type thing or whatever but it's just like it, it is a very recurring thing too like Dude. I'll have it maybe once every few months or so or the bathroom right. that bathroom is probably haunted the, the main one I'll have dreams of like I'm in the bathroom just getting ready doing things and all of a sudden, the shower will turn on on its own, and the bathtub will start filling up. And sometimes it Jeez. just doesn't stop filling up, and it like overflows and stuff. But the bathroom's not I locked. Had... I can choose to leave anytime I want. I'm just like sitting here letting it play out. <laughs> oh, what's gonna happen next? <laughs> like I'm calling the the dreams bluff. Like, what you gonna do, huh? Are you gonna, are you gonna do flood? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You think I, I'm um, you? I haven't experienced anything weird here in a while, or at, at all here. Uh, besides the dreams last night, those were weird. Um, but like spiritually, I haven't experienced anything weird here. Uh, maybe now I will, since my sister's here. She has a friend. Yeah, yeah. But there was actually uh, two other entities in that house too that would know. Like there was probably more, but there's two like known entities that we know of. Uh, one of them even inspired a, a book that I started writing. So there, one of them was there was a tall man, very pale. Uh, tall man, right? And pale? He, yeah, very pale. But he looked human. It wasn't like a weird. He was just abnormally tall and pale, right? But he had like a normal face. It wasn't like a slender man or anything like that. Oh, right? uh, that's Brent. And uh, <laughs> but he was like the, the height. He was like eight feet tall. Oh, Jesus. No, Nathaniel. Yeah, and he would lean on the bunk bed and just, like, you know, stand there leaning on it. But he was tall enough that he could lean on the bunk bed like that. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. And there was another one. There was, a like, a Celtic witch, almost, I guess is the way to describe it. I, I could probably find the picture very easily. Because uh, I had found one when I was re-describing it to Joey, and he was like, yes, it's exactly what she looked like. But there was a witch that lived in Joey's room. And she, like, had branches Celtic coming witch. out of her head and stuff like that. You can't be talking about your mom like that, dude. No, That's no, it wasn't bro. my mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if I can find the exact picture that I found before. Uh... <laughs> All right, McGrath. <laughs> oh yeah here if I found it let me open up in a new tab and then uh, enlarge it and share and it basically it looked like this lady here uh, that I have on this uh, this the stream right, this one 
Except if she was like 40 years older. I think mine's a bit behind. Hold on, let me yeah, yeah. It, It'll take a little bit to catch up. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that, but 40 years older. Like a long brown, like raggedy but billowing dress. And it was this like Celtic witch lived in Joey's room. I've never seen her no dead on. But I've seen her in the, like the side of my vision. A lot too. Like even before anybody else told me that they saw her. And our like accounts of her matched up. I've seen I've seen like shadow people. You ever you ever looked into shadow people? Yeah. I, there was one night where I really looked. The first night I ever looked into them, like I would fucking had to stay up until morning, <laughs> until daybreak. Um. Yeah, I, I was like, shit freaked me out, especially the Hat Man thing, because I've seen like a Hat Man type oh, figure yeah. before, and uh, that fucking freaked me out. That tall man had a hat, but, like a top hat. That's what I was thinking when yeah, you yeah. said tall man. I thought I was thinking of a hat man. Yeah, but yeah. That's why when you said pale, I said pale. I was like, yeah, he's pale, had a top released. hat. But otherwise, you're like, I don't. Maybe just because how sensitive I am to this stuff, I, I, I have the wherewithal to be able to distinguish the face, right? Because I've, I've come to the conclusion that there's some things that do have distinguishable features. Features. But you have to have the right senses to distinguish them. Might also Otherwise, they, they just end up being want to show blurry. themselves. Yeah. What they have the energy to show. If it, I don't know. I don't really yeah. know how it works. But um. But shadow people don't scare me. I don't know why. It's probably because like shadow, the, the experience. shadow people are supposed to be like interdimensional, aren't they? <sighs> There's a That's lot. That's one of the theories. About it, yeah. But so like, one of the uh, fucked up jokes that I want to make that I'm can, not going. You can make no. a fucked up really joke you want. This is the vomitorium, Monka baby. Monka TOS. <laughs> Monka TOS. I already know the jokes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Monka TOS. Monka TOS. Um, I think it's because they feel physical, right? When you actually encounter them. It feels like there's a physical being there. It, that it yeah, doesn't I feel like three. Because it's weird. I especially like you know talking about the type of dreams. I'll fight anything, honestly. <laughs> I'll fight. <laughs> like, I, dude, they... I just I told you I head bedded something that kind of looked like a shadow person. You know. If the universe is so big. Why want to fight me? Yeah, dude. Like I'm not a fucking afraid of anything, man. <laughs> um, the only thing I'm afraid of is my mom. Yeah. But, uh... It's like that freaking line in Exile was Chaos. We're hunting a succubus. He's like, okay, well, what if you're right and it is a succubus? He's like, I'm not afraid to hit a girl. Or a demon. Or a demon. Or a girl demon. Um... Man. There was this thing at my uncle's house. Not the one that was in chat. But, um... And, uh... He said it was... I don't know, he, he, this thing fucking watched me. I, I would sleep over his house a lot, and I would sleep in the living room. But from the way where I slept, you could see across the hallway and to one of the bedrooms. And it was the bedroom for my little cousin, who was a baby at the time. Her crib was in there and stuff, but they never had her in there. She would always sleep in the room with them. So this room was just empty, and it would always be like, the door would just be open or cracked open, and... I swear to God, every fucking night for like two months, um, it was this thing was just watching me, just, just fucking like peeking around a cor corner, staring at me from that room. But they like never left the room. It was always just peeking around the corner, and um, yeah, I told my uncle about it, and he was like. He was like, "Yeah, I've, I've I've felt it too." He's like, "I, I don't." He's like, "I don't think it's allowed to leave the room or whatever." 
and like you said, it was like it was probably like bound or something. Yeah, and I just fucking I hated it. Like it was just like stared at me, like. It was, uh, it was just, it scared the shit out of me. And then one day it just, it just never showed up again. And my uncle just gave me, like, a nonchalant, like, answer later. I was like, oh, I, I haven't seen it in a while. And yeah. he was like, yeah. He was like, it's, uh, it's not there anymore. That's all he said. Um. But yeah, it, it, that thing fucking, to this day, like, I, it's part of the reason I hate. Like, I, I told multiple people this, that I hate, like, silhouettes peeking around corners of doors and doorways and shit. Yeah. Like, it really freaks me out. Uh, to the point where one night, uh... One night, um... I told Carl about this. And as we all know, Carl's a piece of shit, and... He, I was like really drunk or something, and I'm laying down, and he fucking peeks around the corner, looking at me. All I could see is a silhouette of his head. I couldn't see who it was. Yeah, yeah. And it scared me so fucking bad. It like it was like one of those like, <gasps> like like you lose your breath. Yeah. Type of like uh, it was just like, oh, uh, it pissed me off so much. I got so fucking mad. I think actually Matt was there for that. Well, I know Matt does that I think all the he's, time. Like if there's I a think doorway, he was the one he'll just kind of like he'll go like this, and he'll have like that that slight grin, like he's he's being naughty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, no, he he never Matt never did it to me because he knew how much that shit scared me. Like yeah, yeah, but he'll like do that to like just... everybody else, like to David and shit. That, like no, that. no, that that he'll do to me, but like the other thing, like I think he's the one who who's told Carl to fuck off. Yeah. Cause that was when we were like sharing a bed, no homo or full homo, whatever you want. One sec. Bromo. He get deep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was also another weird experience that I had growing up, right? Talking about beds and stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't. I never talked to Matt about this. I don't know if he's had the experience, but I know Joey did. So I'm assuming maybe Matt did too. Uh. Either that or Joey might be more sensitive than that. Because I, I know he's sensitive to that stuff like we are, but I don't know if it's to the same degree or not. Um, oh, Matt? Yeah. But, uh... Uh, I think he is. He talks... He actually usually talks to me about it, if he ever feels something. Yeah, like, I know he is sensitive, I just... I We haven't talked enough that I don't know how, how sensitive it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm, like, super fucking sensitive to that stuff, right? In fact, yeah, when we too. were that's, that's why. going to uh, Chicago, Dylan was like, if we happen to pass any uh, haunted houses or anything, or is it Matt that said One of them said it. Um, we have to stop. And, uh, and I think it was Matt that said that, and then Dylan's like, well, how will you even know? And I said, oh, I'll know. He's like, yeah, Tommy will know. <laughs> like, we just pass by, I'll know. Um... But th what happened tell. is, yeah. because I'm so sensitive to that stuff, and I'm assuming it would happen to my brothers too, seeing shit like that from an early age, you, you kind of, like, when you're young, it does scare you. Like, I am so detached from it now, I don't remember what it feels like to be scared of that shit, but I do remember that I was. Yeah. It's just the feeling's gone. Like, I, I, I've become too callous to it. And when I was younger, you would, like, I would sleep with the blanket over my head just so I don't have to see, like, fucking anything, right? Yeah, yeah. But the problem is, like, y you run out of cool air fast, right? Like, fresh air. You're, you're starting to circulate yeah, exactly. your own air. So what you do is all we all shared the same room uh, very early on in life. Like, uh, I think maybe when I was six, I had my own room. But up until that point, the, the three of us were in the same room because Joey was just a baby. Matt was uh, a toddler. And I would, you know, all our beds were up to the walls in different corners of the room. So you'd hug the wall and you'd use the gap between the bed and the wall for airflow, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I would look down into the gap and I would see lights. 
Right. Like this, this, not super bright. It was almost like, I don't know. It was like a calm, like a serene light, almost like, like, you know, that fuzzy feeling you were talking about in the dream earlier. Yeah. It was like that, but in a physical form and I had not yet fallen asleep yet. And I talked to Joey, and when he was older and he was in that room uh, by himself, uh, probably about the same age I was when I saw it, he, he saw it too. And I don't know if Matt ever saw it or not. But it's almost like... It, it, it feels like a safety net, but it also kind of feels like a trap at the same time. Like, like almost like there's nowhere you could go to escape seeing this shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, you kind of get numb in a sense, but at the same yeah. time, it's still what it is, yeah. you know? Like I said, like, I got numb to the point of things watching me sleep, to where, like I said, I was just like, fuck off, like, go away, like, leave me alone, I just want to sleep, and I would just turn over, and that's it. Yeah. Where back in, when I was younger, I would freak the fuck out. And don't get me wrong, I'm not completely numb to it, like I said, I fucking... That house freaked me out. I mean, to be honest, though, in real life, I probably would go into the house. In daytime, not at nighttime. I don't think I could do it at nighttime. Just, uh, I don't think I could. I, I, I don't know. Um, just partially for, you know, it's like no one lives there and it's falling apart. Yeah. So, There's probably like, like I've seen pictures. in there at this point. A lot of what? Uh, so there's probably mold. black mold in there at this point. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like I said, I go during the daytime because I could see and not, you know, fucking fall through the floor. But, um... I mean, yeah, partially the reason I don't want to go in there at night is because of what is what resides. Yeah. And, we, um, we went to a children's hospital, um, like an abandoned one, kind of like that, when I was down in college for Waco because it... The TSTC, or Texas State Technical College, is built on, like, an old air base, right? There's an airstrip there. They teach piloting and stuff like that. Um, and all kinds of stuff. So it had all the facilities that a military base would have. And there's an old abandoned building that's been kind of condemned off on the far end. That's like a children's hospital. We went down the road. It's surrounded by trees and stuff, so you can't even really see the rest of the campus from there. And we were hanging out. And they were asking me uh, if it was safe to go in there, like from that type of like spiritual sense. And I'm looking in and stuff. It's like I don't feel anything. I don't. I don't think there's anything lingering here. But I can like see black mold, so we probably shouldn't go in there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like that's actually probably a bigger hazard to your health than if there was some type of entity living in there. Yeah, this is, yeah, this probably is mold. Like, I wa I seen pictures recently of it. I don't know how recent the pictures are, but, I mean, it's definitely after we lived there. No one lived in there. And, um... I'm gonna see if I can actually find it, but... Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, Bug says Matt would probably dare you to sleep in the room, or in the house. Yeah, he probably would, but, uh... Oh, well, I he'd probably insist actually. on going in there with you. I'm gonna post this. I'll post this in restream just so you can. Anyone can click on it. That's. This is the this is the house though. It's fucking. These pictures are like. You can actually see the landing in one of the pictures, that I was talking about. It, these these pictures are 2012, so they're pretty fucking old. And they're really blurry. These are like pictures were taken with like a Game Boy. I'm gonna show it. Ah, uh, bu 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 bam. They're so blurry. They are. They changed the bathtub. The bathtub when I was there was one of those old bathtubs with feet, which I also didn't like. Still living. Is that the landing? Oh, uh, let me see. Is it's it got the, the stairs uh, the with the square in the middle? In different uh, areas. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that that going that going up to the left is the bathroom, and then where that would be standing would be 
to the right would be the where the dresser was with the dolls. Yeah. Like you can see at the top, that's where the stairs would be to the attic. And then behind would be the other, all three of the rooms. But yeah, we would hop over that or skip that landing. So yeah, as you see, it was falling apart in uh, 2012. So I can't even imagine it now. If it's even there. Oh, cool! I get it. I think it is. I think it last sold for like twenty thousand or thirty thousand dollars. It says it was built in nineteen fifteen. Okay, that would actually make sense. But here's the thing, right? If they did manage to like refurbish it or whatever, right? Uh, would it really be that? Well, there might be other entities. Let's say, would it really be a problem? If uh, the dude followed your uh, sister, <laughs> like like maybe she's just fucked, and anybody else who tried to live there would be fine. <laughs> well, there were other things there. Yeah, yeah, that, that's why I said maybe there's other entities. Yeah, there was definitely other things. Um, because that that thing never messed with us. Oh, so that's probably the safe did. one. Huh. He was probably the safe one looking for someone to attach to, like, get me the fuck out of this place. Probably. But, I mean, he did attack her. Or maybe yeah. he did, or maybe he didn't, I don't know. She was saying Jacob stop, so I assume it was him. Or maybe she could have been telling him to stop something else. I don't know. Maybe. But, uh, if you see in the first picture, that is the barn on the left that I said I couldn't go into. Yeah. And then on the right is the house. I wish these were. I wish there were better pictures. I really do. I mean, at least you can see the landing. That's like, that's that. When I I brought this up actually like two weeks ago, and I was uh, I was like, holy shit, that's the landing. That's the one. It gave me fucking chills just looking at it. Like, there are pictures in here of the attic, so I guess they cleaned up the bats. Yeah, so um, I actually have a story that I, I have the first chapter up. I, I might add a picture oh. to it so it's more like a pulp. Uh, but you can read it on uh, xtimeischaos.com. And it's uh, loosely based off of my experiences, but it's put into kind of a, a fictional type story uh, that's larger than life. And it's called Beyond the Terror Threshold. Well, the first chapter is called The Tall Man and His Door. And if you actually want a description of what that tall man looked like, I have, like, an entire, like, two paragraphs dedicated to it. It's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying yeah. to uh, build up the suspense and the creepiness. It's kind of a horror fantasy uh, story that's being built up. You should write one about your phantom twin and just call it phantom twin. Oh, uh, the Phantom Twin shows up in a lot of my stories. Uh, there's yeah, actually a, a major character that's based off of that in the uh, x Dynamus Chaos. And, uh... So, actually, uh, it's dead of what a lot of people think, because they, the Phantom Twin looked like me when we were young. I think it was supposed to be a girl. But, you know, it, it can be hard to tell guys and girls uh, apart when they're, like, under the age of five. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I've had conversations with this thing before. Kind of, like, in that astrally foggy state. And every time it appears to me, it's a girl that vaguely looks like me. And we're having a conversation. But sometimes just in, in raw dreams... And I, I could tell the difference on whether it is my mind dreaming of that person or if the person's actually there because I feel like a pressure is on the world, I guess, or like on your existence. Like reality has a pressure to it that wasn't there before, which is kind of like letting me know that there's something else in here, if that makes sense. I guess a good way, like, you ever see Bleach? 
Yeah. Yeah, and you know how, like, they can attack people directly with their spiritual pressure and can kind of, like, crush people? Mm-hmm. That's kind of, like, what it is. It's like there's a pressure there that wasn't there before. Almost like, uh, like, being underwater, right? And you can just feel the pressure of the water on top of you. That That's kind of how I know when the uh, Phantom Twin is there. But one time I was having a dream, and I'm, like, running along the side of the road. You know, sometimes I have superpowers in my dreams, you know? Um, and I'm, like, yeah. running around the side, along the side of the road as fast as the cars are going, and a, a big, like, big rig, a Mack truck, comes pulling by, which I thought was symbolically funny because this uh, person refers to herself as Mack, uh, short for Mackenzie, and she pulls up in a Mack, and I hop in, and the first thing she asks me is, like, so, how's your mom? And then I give her, like, this dead stare, and she's like, how's our mom? And we have, like, a conversation. It's, it's kind of pleasant for a while. But, like, I, I can tell it's not a part of the dream. Yeah. But, you know, the Phantom Twin Gosh. shows up in a lot of stuff. <laughs> I, um... I've never... I've never talked to anything um, paranormal. Well, this like that talked back, you know. Mm. Like I, I've, I've, like I said, I've told them to fuck off, told them to leave me alone. I've said, uh, I've just like kind of scoffed at them. I was yeah, just yeah. like, <sighs> <laughs> I've had similar things. Like when you said uh, you just want to go sleep, I'd be like, okay, you want to dance, or can I sleep? You want to dance? You were trying to square up, or yeah, yeah. Uh, like, were we gonna do something, or can I go to sleep? Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I just like I was at a point where I was just like, whatever. I just want to go to sleep. I'm so tired. Um, but they never talked back. Ever. I want to try to dig, and. Uh, See if my sister can remember anything about Jacob, because what Buck said is it could be true. Um, I don't know. Shit's weird. Yeah, that yeah, that could very much be true. If if um, there was one that she trusted, right? And then he's mm -hmm. like, "Well, I'm just gonna pretend I'm the one you trust." Like. Shit's crazy. The, the, I remember one of the first spiritual experiences I had. I don't even know if it was a spiritual experience. Um, I just remember I woke up, I used to share a bunk bed with my mom. And uh, before my sister was born. And I just woke up and I was on top bunk. And I just looked over the edge and it looked like someone like walked through the room. But it was like it wasn't an actual person. Yeah. Like there was, it just looked like like a shadow like walked through my room and then like through the door. And I was like, what the fuck? And I like looked down and my mom was just in bed. And I was like, what the fuck was that? Like, you know, I was like three years old, so I wasn't like saying that, but <laughs> in my head I was like, what the fuck was that? And I just, I couldn't do anything because where, where am I gonna go? Like, yeah, yeah. You're, you're so I just went back to sleep. That's most of the reason I got so fed up with these things showing up while I'm sleeping. Because in, in the one house, um, I'd wake up and there would just be something at the end of my bed, just a figure at the end of my bed. And it was like, well, the door is that way, so I'm just going to go back to sleep because there's nothing I can do. Yeah, yeah. I can't even reach for the light because <laughs> it's directly above you. Well, so uh, where I am right now, and I usually keep it next to me while I'm sleeping here, I'll actually get up and show you. Uh, so, this room doesn't have a, uh, a ceiling light. It only has this light right here. And so it doesn't have a switch. Actually, almost none of the, uh, the back rooms, I think. No, the one on this side is. The two on this side, so the, the non-master bedrooms, don't have light switches. They have, like, installed oh. lights, so you have to, like, turn a knob or something like that, right? So this, uh, over here 
is the or the outlet or whatever is set to a garage door opener. So I can like turn it off, turn it on. Oh shit. Right? See, I would have loved to have that in those situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I just keep that next to me while I'm sleeping. And, uh, most of the time I never turn it on, but it's like the door is right there in that corner. And almost everywhere I've ever been, the bed's been in a corner. So it's been that type of circumstance. And if there was something there, you would have to get past it to get to the door. So I feel like the ghosts um, are very... Like, I, I feel like they still exist in daytime. You just can't really see them. Like, in light, you know? Um, I, it might be a sensory thing, right? Because yeah, like, it might be... And a lot of people say in the dark it's because your brain is filling in gaps so you th see things that aren't there. And for a lot of cases, that might be true. Like I said, I'm, I'm still very skeptical about a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's also the case that you might be receiving so much information from... The, the physical world that when the lights on we're very uh, visually based creatures mm -hmm. that you might drown out anything else that might be there exactly like I th not I don't think I don't know about like just that but I, I was thinking more of like a just because of I don't know how, what they're whatever they're made of I guess if they're made of anything. I mean, it's like the whole like ectoplasm thing, I guess, but I don't really know what that yeah, is. Yeah, I don't think ectoplasm's a thing. Yeah, I don't think it's a thing. It's like a... But it'd be kind of like but, dark like, matter, uh, right? Like, it, it's kind of just a thing, but there's no explanation for dark energy or dark matter. It's just kind of like... It's called dark because we don't know what it is, but we can feel its presence. Like, it, it sets off sensors. We know there's some type of gravitational pull out in space. That's not uh, fixated to visible matter that we can see, right? It's, it's kind of like that. It's like ectoplasm might be a thing, but if it is, it's not like what anybody thinks it is. Yeah, I don't think it's like a like. I think if ghosts are made of anything, they're made of kind of like loosely bound molecules, like like a plasmid, so much so that <laughs> which is what ectoplasma huh? would be like a plasmid which would kind of be like what ectoplasma yeah would well be. Uh, well like a yeah i guess so yeah <laughs> um but like because like if we can't physically touch them unless sometimes and like we can't really see them all that in unless certain situations like maybe it's just that's why we can't see them in light, because light just like goes right through them to the point where we can't see them. Well, except I at certain angles. I have a hypothesis. And I don't think they're made of anything physical whatsoever. But that's not to say that they can't physically interact with you. Uh, because I, I've been doing a lot of scientific research my entire life on things. And I, I've been looking into trying to figure out, like a lot of people are, what explains the universe itself. Right? Mm -hmm. And I've kind of... I fall into a camp of people that redefine what entropy is. And that... Because entropy people describe as the flow of energy, right? From highly concentrated to uh, low uh, concentration, right? From order to chaos. But... I don't think you can say energy is the proper way of uh, explaining what entropy is. I believe that ultimately the entire universe is just made of information, kind of like a computer. Yeah. It's just, it would be more like an organic computer. Uh, I actually think it's a complexity engine. But um, if everything is made out of various forms of information, and we're still not even sure what consciousness is, like nobody can fully explain consciousness then you could end up leaving an imprint of your information behind. Right? And the, the Greeks actually had this idea a long time ago. A few other societies, too. They called them shades, right? It's one of the earliest mm -hmm. ideas of um, the fact that the soul may not be a part of the body. Because uh, the, the Hebrew people didn't believe that, right? They... Even up to yeah. the time of Christ, they didn't believe that there was a separation between the soul and the body. They thought when the body died, so did the soul, because the soul's the breath 
it's like the steam that powers the body, and one can't exist without the other. You went to Sheol, yeah. which just means the grave. But uh, uh, Plato, right? Or people say Plato. Uh, Plato theorized that you, you left a shade behind, that there was something more to you than just you. And th that's the thing that would end up going to uh, Hades or anywhere else. And the shade is not necessarily you because it's not fully cognizant. It's not fully conscious. It's almost like an imprint of your consciousness. It's like it's what you leave behind. And if uh, you have enough willpower, which I think willpower is consciousness. If something has enough will to it, consciousness comes into existence, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so you have scales of will. And uh, things that have a lot of will have a higher ability to manipulate the environment around them and themselves, which when you look at human beings, we have an abnormal ability to manipulate our environment compared to any other creature that we've seen. So we probably have yeah. the highest amount of will that any creature has in this type of information-based sense. So if you happen to have like an, a high concentration of will, you might physically leave an imprint of yourself behind. And that's that makes... what I think a lot of these things are. That actually, that, that actually would make, would make a lot of sense, because yeah. that would explain why there's only... There's not, like, in, a fucking infestation Yeah, yeah, because you know, if so, like, every living here, thing that ever existed goes. would leave something behind. Exactly. And yeah. that, that's what I always was like... I, I guess, like, uh, skeptics would, like, argue. Yeah. And uh, Or, like, like, in well, my case, right? Let's say I have a... One of the reasons I might be sensitive to it is I might have just an inordinate amount of will, right? That might also yeah. be why my phantom twin was able to stay. Because we might have a bound will. It, could, it definitely could. I mean, I've always said that it's kind of unrelated. It's not unrelated, but I don't know. I, I, I've always said that like, um, People who are deeply religious have, like, they don't have as much willpower because they have to depend on something. They have to they have to believe in something, and not themselves. You know, like I'm always whenever I like do something for myself, I thank myself for it because I worked for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, see, I I, I do have a little bit of pushback to that. But not entirely. I, I think it, it, there's certain people, right? So, people who are blindly religious, maybe. Right? That's what I, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. But the thing with religion, right, is that if you look at it as you look at society, right? Because I think people have a really bad idea of what is and isn't a religion. Because uh, religion ultimately is a set of rules for navigating through life like navigating the world yeah 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 and no, so there's mimetic to, value yeah. and they kind of evolve on their own there might be some truths to each of them some might be more true than other but they're they're almost like a rule set and you can even tell this in the way that people talk about it let's take uh christianity right um uh, the tr the word true uh in the oldest sense not like what we mean now when something's factual right uh, the word true is almost like the word fitness, right? It's something that works. Uh, the word truth can be translated to the way, right? Or like the Tao in uh, Chinese. And if you look at uh, old Judaic culture, they always refer to Yahweh as the one true God. So that it's not that they didn't believe the other gods existed. If you actually go back and read the text, right? Because they believed when they were in Egypt that Yahweh was doing battle with the Elohim of Egypt, which are the gods or deities of Egypt, right? Like, he was actually actively confronting these things. He, they believed that these gods existed. The sin of the golden calf, right, the ball worship, wasn't even that you were uh, worshipping a god that didn't exist. It's that by worshipping this being, you were giving it more power, or you were giving attention to it, right? 
Uh, you can even say that maybe gods do exist in a form of the collective will of the people that worship it, right? At, if you're going to look at it skeptically and not as a believer. And yeah. the this these rule sets is like, well, you can't let another god be more powerful than our god, then he wouldn't be the way, right? And they even Christ is often referred to as the truth and the way, right? And if you want to talk about a rule set that's been very, very successful for society, look at how well Christianity has uh, proliferated the world. And some of the great things that have been made by cultures that follow this rule set. Not saying it's the ultimate rule set. There's arguments against yeah. it. But it clearly works, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, that's yeah. what the whole, you know, Book of Eli is about. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, like I, I, I've said it before, I have no problem with people following whatever religion they like. It's just, um, people who are like, yeah, like you said, blinded by it, like Sebi. Um, it's that old analogy, the, the sheep versus the shepherd, right? There, there's yeah. a lot of people who are of moderate to low will and will just be sheep. They follow trends because trends are healthy, right? It means you're part of a crowd, the crowd can protect you. There, There's a evolutionary benefit to following trends. So people do the safe thing, right? If there's a trend that's going on, people join the herd. Whether it's right, whether it's wrong, it doesn't matter. It's right right now because it's improving my odds of survival and of reproducing. True. And we're actually over time. I... <laughs> I, I got like really technical and scientific about things at the end and just kind of went off. I was, it's funny. I was actually when when you ended that, I was gonna say, and on that note, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you everybody for joining us at the Vomitorium, uh, and, and Duggar. Uh, even though you didn't say much, we do appreciate the humor and you jumping in. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and and we'll just, we'll see you next time. Well. Yeah. On, uh, hopefully we'll stick to schedule. We've been running okay for the last few uh, episodes already. So yeah. yeah, I should be back to normal now. Join us, join us on Saturday, where we'll talk about some more bullshit. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think we always have fun. Yeah, yeah. We, we we came into this not really knowing what to talk about, and here we are. Talk about ghosts and all types. And the thing is, I still have more to talk about. <laughs>